Welcome to Starfinder, the Fragments of Eternity, session 58. Ryan gets closer to that heart attack every day, I think. Um, it is the 29th of June 2020. I am still Ryan, the GM. Here are the players. Hello. Hello. Hi. And Hi. hey there. I'm Nico. And I'm playing Zora, the best card. Greetings, I'm Alex, and I'll play Weird, the Android Mechanic. Hello, I'm representing for the gangsters all across the world, and I am Colin, and I will be playing Lyco Quint, the operative spooky, yeah. Spooky, yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Hello. Hi. I am Callum, and I will be playing Zig. I have successfully grabbed my toilet, and we are good to go. Excellent. Grab his toilet, he's going with him. Get, uh, grab your toilet, uh, and you're good to go. Yep, that's it. It's a new rule for this. From now on, session 50 onwards, standing rule, make sure you're always in contact with your toilet, just in case. So, Which um... One? Exactly. Some psycho <laughs> psychometric <laughs> activities may cause um, unwanted um, <laughs> movements. <laughs> that's unwanted toilet. That's radiation poisoning. Things you never oh, thought yeah. you would say when you were younger, right? Well, older me ever say some psychokinetic activities or abilities may cause unwanted movements in the future? No, I don't think I ever will <laughs> say this. And then look at yourself today, Callum. <laughs> Flashback to ten years. Or as opposed to flashback. I did say that. Yes. So. Flashback. Who flashback. remembers what happened last time on the Fragments of Eternity? <laughs> we did the kid for a while to seek medical attention. Mm-hmm. Yes. Which, I mean, I went away for like an hour. Mm-hmm. So please fill me in on what happened. We thought it was a spaceship. Yeah, there oh. was, there was mm. a chunk of... Uh, Spaceship talk. There was a bunch of checkups. Uh, Ziggs might have some wrong with him, and uh, <laughs> Alice is pregnant. I don't. That I, was that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I agree that there was a chunk of spaceship talking. I would characterise it as talking on a spaceship. Um, am I a lion? Well, in universe, Nico. <laughs> am I a lion indeed? <laughs> uh, meow. <laughs> meow. As long as you meow, right, man? You're, you're good. Your definition of line is one thing. Mm. <laughs> Anything else, maybe, that happened at all? Well, Friganti! Oh. Um, Ali, Al, Al, Alice was, was quite a... Well, that was quite a turn up for the books. Mm. And now the, the question is, the, the $60 million or, or credit or whatever they're called in space buck question is, you know... Whomst the daddy? Mm-hmm. Whomst is the daddy? And the queen ain't cocaine crazy anymore. That's quite nice. Mm-hmm. Psycho what... groupie cocaine crazy, yeah. yeah. That's, the, that's the great surge tank. Qu'est-ce que c'est? Is that what the next line is there? Oh, 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 oh. Psycho <laughs> cocaine groupie crazy. I go, 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 Speaking of cocaine out there, kids, never, <laughs> never, <laughs> don't, cocaine not even drug. once. Cocaine <laughs> is a drug. Hell of a drug. No, don't do it. We do not promote cocaine. drug use, recreational, or medically prescribed other. No, that's. Ju- no, no, back up a bit. Oh. No, just no drugs, kids. I thought it was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> no. Personally, I. Kes Kese. It's expressed by Colin and or like O'Quint do not necessarily re- represent the views and opinions of the um, Victor Triumph uh, <laughs> <laughs> of I'm, firing, I'm firing up my notes app and preparing my apology as we speak, guys. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to know more about drugs, go to Crew. It's a charity here in Edinburgh that does drugs advice. Uh, C R E W. I'm nice. to hit Colin up. <laughs> I, I actually am, you know what, I'm, I've, I've not touched an illegal substance in some months. Wow. Uh, three and a half. You see the lockdown is taking you hard. 
You know what? <laughs> I don't really. I don't. I'm not. I'm just being edgy. I don't really bother with with legal drugs. I mean, you're spoiling our aesthetic. I, I used to get on the end a lot of weed with my pal Daryl, but other than that, I've tried a couple of. Don't things. shame oh, Daryl in this, Darryl. right? Darryl, like, you know what, Daryl? Wow. Good lad. Darryl. Good lad. Shout out to Daryl, whoever the fuck he is these days. What a nice boy. Just good chap. Oh lad. It'd be amazing oh, if it was that. the same Daryl that I know. <gasps> <sighs> I'm going to be honest, it would be amazing, because I don't think he's ever been to the islands. I thought you were going to say because he's dead. Oh, <laughs> it doesn't mean you say it's not the same one, though. It could still be the same Daryl. <laughs> yeah, it could, it could have. No, um, I don't. Well, always dead. dead thing, yeah. It's more fucking terrifying Callum. Back is this the Daryl paradox we've just come up with, which is another good name for a band and or, like, podcast, you know? <laughs> yeah. The Big Bang Theory, and I apologize. No, let's not. We're just going to go right back into the. Uh, what do you remember from last time? Is there anything else? Um, I'm sure there are specifics. Um, Al, not Alice. Um, Isabel. Talking. I mind linked. Zig mind linked. Mind linked his mind. <coughs> mm -hmm. And shared some stuff. And terrible things haven't yet happened. Brain interface. Yes. I was going to say terrible things didn't happen, but I'm, you know, aware of how time works in this universe, so... Are you? That's one of us. Um, um, yeah, sure, fuck it, why not? We talked a little bit about time, and mm -hmm. we were all, you know, Queen is quite um, intrigued about the whole time travel thing. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I mean, to be fair, because she's probably had the most time robbed from her, right? Mm. Could go back in time... Where I play with time freely. <laughs> and find all the way. Mm. Weed less than a new. I mean, I think then, people think worse of her than a witch, quite frankly, as it stands. So, um. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I think she's alright. I quite like um, her, you know, Sanida, you know? Yeah, she's... she was definitely going, hmm, can I get back to, to my time? And I don't mean uh, Triple H's steam tune uh, before he got the one by Moorhead. I don't think any of us thought that, to be honest, but here we are now. You um, should have. I don't know if that's true. That, it, was a, it was a banging theme tune and him and China used it. It was yeah. a great track. I don't know how I feel about just letting the Queen go back in time to her own time. Probably not a good idea. Because how much would change, you know? Butterflies, man. You would all live underwater. I don't want to do that. No. But I've never seen any of them, but I have seen that episode of... Um, Blackadder. Uh-huh. What if we go back in time and stop the butterfly from getting made? Yeah, so just stop that being a thing. Then you're just, you've got free reign of time. In fact. Exactly. Perfect. In fact, you need to also get rid of paradox then. Um, just in general. That would be good. Uh, then, yeah. China, they're not allowed time travel movies. Interesting. Because <laughs> discovered it and they like don't want to um, time travel uh, it, reactionary. Yeah, and sometimes you would time travel undermining the revolutionary principles and calling into doubt some of their teachings. Yeah, I agree. Isn't this so? Let's just go on that small tangent right now, okay? And I'm fully aware of this, but isn't that why the um, the actress from the X Men Days of Future Past movie went mysteriously missing because she was involved in a massive movie about time travel? This sounds like a talk for another. Podcast, right? Yeah, I think that we should save this for the um, Crywolf Conspiracy <laughs> podcast. Um, I'll but, add that to the spreadsheet. Yes, please do, because uh, that was super interesting at the time. I read about like her random going missing and then she randomly I reappeared again. Hearing about it and then I never followed up, so I don't know if there was more of a story beyond that. I mean, maybe no, we'll, we'll, we'll find out in uh, our first episode of Crywolf. So. Your audio Same. quality, by the way, uh, Alex, has really... It's not been good all along, but it just shat the bed there. Oh, I opened a document. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was dramatically improved in that. The biggest crime of all, asking your computer to do basic tasks. <laughs> <laughs> Processing. So, Processing. Come, carry on. Anyone that's managed the... Nine ten minutes of a uh, absolute fucking bullshit so far. Bravo. Um, let's talk Bravo. about goals, shall we, guys? Let's do that. Let's that's that's yeah. Find a sustainable source of income for myself would be the first one. 
think, yeah. establish a self-sustaining revenue is actually the proper word. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it is still ongoing, and one day. Mm -hmm. Maybe yeah. next week. <laughs> the blonde day. <laughs> Goal two, perhaps? Are we still doing two and three there, Mr. Weird? Uh, sorry, I have not got that document open. Soccer prepare, prepare for audio policy. Uh, I've now got it open, and the lower one is quite interesting. Yes. Uh, are we still kicking about Akaton? I don't know if that was discussed much before. I think like the idea that. was to go back to Akaton, yeah, yeah. Okay. Probably cool. if oh, we are going to split. Probably be best if we actually hmm. back up the hackathon problem. Uh, so yeah, I'll, I'll here, here's now. another thing that's maybe worth mentioning now then as well. You just don't know what your travel times independently are going to be. Yep. Uh, okay. Which There's means no I would recommend that you decide obviously when you know you divvy up who's to go and what ship and whatnot. Perhaps decide what the first team back are going to do while waiting on the next team? Because let's face it, somebody might have a travel time of a day to the, say the sun and a day back to Akaton. And somebody might have 12 days back and forth to Versus. I've got plenty to do when I get back. So, so that's my two plans. Excellent. Um, and keep in mind it can be overall group goals, right? That these are all, you know, trying to push forward. Um, realistically, you could try and get in touch with each other as well, I guess, right? Um, but I think you might still be waiting days for the responses, but based on what I remember from how the communication works in this, like in, like the inter kind of solar system communication, I think it is still days you need to wait, so yeah. You just need to, like, you just need to power Zig up a bit, right? And then let him just have like inst instant telepathic communication over the solar system, right? That's what you need to do. Just feed him more mind links. Um, but yes. Bring them to me, I'd rather power from their minds. So, let's review these goals, Alexander, shall we? Yes. Goal two. I would like to establish Cyberdyne Industries and begin developing Skynet with Pubboard. Right, okay. I, I'll admit I forgot most of the words that were involved in the, uh, the discussion I had with Naz McEquick, mm -hmm. including his name, until just now. Mm -hmm. um, Naz so McEquick, yes, we discussed this. Uh, what are we going to do? Make robo body parts with. Oh, Lord. <laughs> I don't know his name. It's Naz McEquick. It's just, it says it sounds, you know. Fuck, Lord. Fuck, yeah. I suppose right, I want to make the company. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, yeah, actually, like, uh, legitimise it, essentially, you, you mean? Yeah, I've got some difficult thoughts, because I want to follow our typical naming conventions as we've established. Mm -hmm. And I don't know how you feel about having a shop next to the car hole called the body hole. I think, I mean, it depends... Oh, I hear the hole. I... Start with a W. The whole the whole body. Um, yep. um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, what if we go body shop? I've got an idea for a logo. The body um, shop would actually be really fitting next to your car body shop place mm -hmm. that you actually mm -hmm. have. But it's like so you either go to car hole to get your car fixed, or you go to the body shop to get your body fixed. It's perfectly simple. Um, yeah. So um, um, yeah. Then we've got logo sorted already. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, I see it. Cool. Yep, perfect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, you could always call it the limb hole as well if you really wanted to, or limbo is also a valid one. I think as a I genuine. Don't, I don't suggestion. Know. We're just on limbs. We we specialize in the whole body. The whole body. Um, yeah, like you could have like the limbo section on <laughs> the inside. You know, mm -hmm. um, divvy it up into like smaller workshops. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, you want the kidney hole. This is the liver hole. Sorry. Let me transfer you. Walk over to the 
I like to believe that they just put on a different hat and stand where they were, quite frankly. <laughs> <laughs> I think we don't think we can afford multiple desks currently. I think we can afford multiple hats. I think that's right. I just pressed the button. Yeah, you shine. Oh, you've got. It changes the colour of the, the light bulb as well. There's a little switch. Just that's... Puts, puts a different colour film over it. <laughs> then you've got to cycle through the long hole, the heart mm-hmm. hole. It gets you the right one. There you go. How can I help you? I mean, I feel like um, I want to just say no on principle to most of this, actually, just and then go back to whatever my brain was last like checkpointing, which was make robo body parts company with Naz McKechlick. Right, cool. And then goal three, hook up with the new junk rats. Still on board yes. with this? Cool. Yep. I need somebody to move those body parts. <laughs> True that. Um... And also possibly generating people that require new body parts. Um, That's genius. Right? That's a great idea. Vertical integration. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that builds the self-sustaining part. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you build the body parts, you build the surgery to install the body parts, you build the horrific war crimes that require the body parts. I think this team really has it all. Well, to be fair, you have been asked to start wars in the past. Now, currently, you've been asked to stop wars, so perhaps you should maybe, you know, start more wars. In fact, start summon, stop I think we'll start the war. Stop, stop the war. This feels like if you combine the Big Short with the Vietnam War. Yeah. Um, it should be a skill. Also, with. Um, what's the other movie? Was it The Laundrette or whatever it's called? The Laundromat? What was that movie with um, Meryl Streep in it and a bunch of other people? I can't remember now. I think it's. Oh, man. Is it The Laundromat, I think? Uh, Devil Wears Prada? No, it's the laundromat. That's the one. Uh, it's the one about like the Panama Papers. Uh, no. It's, um, it's really good, actually. <laughs> it was really, really good. Um, but, uh, yeah. It doesn't work on Facebook. It's on Facebook would be a... Obviously, Facebook would be a bad place to search for information. Well, Gary Oldman and Antonio Banderas are in it, and uh, Meryl Streep, and it's kind of just incredible, actually. Uh, just as a small aside for all this. Um, the laundromat. The laundromat. They're still reminding me this whole laundromat idea of, of like Vietnam as a laundromat for some reason is putting my so there's this thing that I've wanted to see for years and never have it's called Scotland Pennsylvania right or Scotland PA and it's uh it's an adaptation of Macbeth which sounds like the most fucking like shitty college theater thing ever but it's an actual proper film um Jesus. and the idea is that it's like a Duncan's cafe um you know, fighting for the crown of Scotland. He's Duncan is the manager of like this this fucking this fucking drive. Die. No, it it it, it just is like in Macbeth is like um the whatever junior manager. And like basically, it's in a town called Scotland in Pennsylvania, and rather than being for the kingdom of Scotland, it's for the managership of a. Uh, City cafe. I just love that fucking. And obviously, movie. Christopher Walken's in it. He isn't incredibly, is he? Or he is. He is. He's he's by, he's he, is. he is. Oh my god, he's big tough. Wow. Yes, I've just looked at that now. So, Andy Dex in it of all fucking people. Moving somewhat back to goal number four. Please. <laughs> Lyco. Yay! Yeah. Um, um, I think we, we agreed, my, myself and uh, Capitan, last time that uh, Versys is a spot worth hitting up, um, or at least contacting. Especially due to uh, D. Mogesh, which is his uh, rap name. Um, MC D. Mogesh um, is, is out of the planet and into the fire um, he's on at tri- 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 what's it called again Triax. yeah um, because at the moment 
the sort of the, the main threat there isn't present, we can perhaps risk going back bodily. Um, and contacting Babak and what was what was she called? It'd be nice if Vesk had like memorable ranks rather than just edgy titles. Edgy titles. Yeah. <laughs> the star Edward's smasher. Edward's bit. Yeah, but the, the idea being that me and the captain can sort of pop over there and contact our contacts and bring them up to speed and, and see what we can gather from that ourselves. Uh, I think that's quite doable within a few sessions. I mean, yeah, right. I think that's reasonable, yeah. Here's, here's open, in fact. Yeah, I mean... I mean yeah. If everyone else is still cool with it, well, I am still very much cool with it. It sounds like a plan. Well, there we go. Stick into it. Good. Go five. Aragorn burst into the um, <laughs> into the solar monastery, march up and confront the Radiant Supreme about time travel and how much he knew slash knows about Zig's importance in inverted commas in retrieving the solar wreck. For a second, I thought you were just going to start like writing your own fan fiction where Aragorn was here with you. Like, I, I have the same. I thought it was going I, to be I like was, and like then slowly. I was like, ah, no, I need to... Back in the room, Callum. Back in the room. <laughs> back in the room. Wow. I just noticed if you uh, edit, uh, we are the Borg to remove all the spaces and every constant other than W and V. <laughs> it's suspiciously close to Weeaboo. And uh, I don't, I don't think, I don't think that's a coincidence. <laughs> <sighs> we're really, we're really milking the eternity part of this. Uh, <laughs> I can't wait for the two-hour director's cut of this campaign. Oh, wow. Yes, the extended cut. edition. Yes. No, this is the extended goddamn edition. <laughs> <laughs> and that's where it will be marketed as the extended goddamn edition. I uh, do feel like I'm living the Snyder cut of my life. Yeah. You mean that you guys never released? <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was in the And yet we still don't five, five minutes for Tom Bombadil. <laughs> yep. <laughs> no five minutes for Tom Bombadil or Bob Tom, Tom Bombadil. <laughs> <laughs> or Dom Tom Bombadil. <laughs> Dom Bombadil. We were talking about Dom Bombadil last night when I was playing Lord of the Rings. That's a new character that I'm going to make the end. Yes, it was um, terrifying as the dawn and everything else, in fact. Oh no! He makes his own leather. Oh dear. Coffee pasta about Tiki macaroni. No, because Callum's going to tell us his actual goddamn goal. My actual goddamn oh. goal is confront the Radiant Supreme about time travel, how much he already knew slash knows about Zig's importance in retrieving Solar Egg, and yes, I think that's doable seeing as that's my destination. Or Good. where I assume he is. Good. Are you sure? Oh, no, but let's move Good on. Friend, 20, 2020? Yeah, 2020. Fuck it, that's the year. That's the new option. MD. So time travel it is again. Is it the year? Mm, no. You're it's back year. time. We'll find another way. That's why I leap Nico is when it goes backwards. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, every four <laughs> years we take one off. Yeah, it's. <laughs> we'll <laughs> system or anything, or this is true. Yeah, it's a weird, weird ass timekeeping system. <laughs> we don't even need to scribble because you've got claws, you can just like scratch them into some wood or something. So, what you're telling me is he's miscounted the amount of minutes in the day and he's just had to like fucking. <laughs> figure out a fix somehow. Like, oh, if I told you, it's not actually. Really I'm just going to say it now fact. base 12, base 12 math, everybody, and then moving on. <laughs> um, so, yes. Uh, how how have. How is it like what, 25 to 9, guys? <laughs> I'm sure we're supposed to start at 7. Um, I think that dog agreed with you. Yeah. Um. Coming off his bedtime. Yeah. <laughs> so, where indeed we were when we ended was in fact the big revelation Pregente 
As hmm. Colin would put it. Um, that Alice Jade. now seems to be a pregnant. I so, can art. So, I would like to know how that happened. So I think we open up with the conference room aboard the, uh, the final hour with everybody kind of staring and all at Alice as she's entered the room eating her uh, energy bar breakfast bar thing and pointing at her stomach after saying, oh also I'm pregnant I am, and kind of staring at everyone's reactions and Finn just looking awkward as hell kind of hologramic, hologrammatic beside her and uh, yeah, I think we just open on everybody's reaction to that scene. Equations uh, are floating in front of my face. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, mouth wide open. What? We are just staring at Zig. Is this headset? Um. <coughs> uh, yeah, Zig is staring at weird. I guess. <laughs> just like, what? Did you do? <laughs> Don't look at me. Why? Why are? Uh, guys. Uh. uh. Why? Finn? Uh, <laughs> stare at Finn. <laughs> He's kind of standing there with like his hands clasped behind his back, you know, just standing to attention, you know, like a good Vesk soldier. And, uh... Okay. Yes, indeed, Captain. Uh, he says to Zora, obviously. <laughs> can get pregnant? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I kind of, I don't want to be rude, but do you have the, the bits that you need? I didn't, I didn't know that. I didn't know. That I think Finn just like turns his head slowly to Alice, expecting her to answer all of this as he stands there awkwardly. I think um, Sanaida just looks at Isabel. And Isabel to Sanaida. As if, what's going on? And, um. Yeah. And Alice finishes stuffing her face full of the. the bar. Look at that energy bar thing. And she's like. You were gone for ages. Where were you? And she starts just like licking her fingers. <laughs> Not long hey. enough. From us. <laughs> Usually. <laughs> I mean, who? Is no one gonna ask? I mean, who? Who? You know. You know. And then she um, looks at you after, like, you know, getting the last of whatever the energy bar was off her finger. Like kind of jamming in her, her teeth with her thumb, like her, her fingernail, and she looks at you like as you're like stumbling to answer and ask this question, and then she just finger guns you and winks. It was like him. It was no, no. <laughs> we just now staring at like her. I think like Sanida <laughs> and Isabel both turn and both look at like her. Shock and admiration. <laughs> and not, not remotely, no. And then no, I, I was no. like, oh, wait, no, this, no, this wasn't Lyco. No. Ah. See? We as a star captain. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it could be. And then she turns to Finn and she's like, see, I told you. And then Finn's like, I don't think it is amusing, ma'am. And then she, she pulls the pillow out from under her top and she goes, Guys, like, use her so easy. And then just um, oh <laughs> puts the pillow oh under her arm. <laughs> and she's like, Really? Me? Uh. Guys. Uh. Guys. Uh. Weird turns around and walks out of the room. Oh, oh, I'm on weird, so I guess, yeah. I, I, 
I've, I've left. You know you have to go towards Alice to get out right and past her. Oh. Turn around. <laughs> Whatever is around. Just walk <laughs> towards the wall. Yeah. Away. Remember, it's that horribly kind of weirdly circular room that just has the table in the middle, like the kind of hollow projector table. So. You go look at the wall for a while. Yeah. Collect myself. And um. Yeah. I, I, you know what? I'll approach her. So she just, um, she's just like, get, get, gutting herself laughing, like laughing into the pillow. Um, Finn is just standing there, rolling his eyes, and obviously we hear the the scream. I, uh, I, you know what? I will go up and I will, I will give her a hug, and I will whisper softly into her ear. That was kind of mean to weird. And then um, she kind of hugs you back and goes, "So it's this then." <laughs> I, 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 you know, you know what? That amuses him, but I don't think he actually chuckles. Mm. It, would, it would ruin the fun. Uh, yeah, I'll hold on for like a few seconds. Yeah, and then um, because I'm making the joke, like a cool kid. And yeah, like she hugs you back. You get a decent grip on her, obviously, because it's Alice. Um, although she is like still holding the pillow, and then she's like, makes the motions to like decouple, as it were, yeah. um, from you. And then she just punches you in the shoulder. And she says, Ow. You look different. And she looks you up and down. I, I got new... I got new stuff. Mm. And he sort of like... <laughs> smooths out the fabric of his half cape thing. <laughs> and then she just looks you up and goes, I like it. Because you're back. And she just smiles. Oh. It's good to see you. And she just smiles like really brightly, like she was gonna say something, but she just kind of holds the smile. Like maybe she didn't realize that that was gonna mean as much as it might have. Um, <laughs> and then she goes, "So, what happened? Why does she look different?" And points straight to Isabel. Did you get new clothes too? Uh, oh, she died. Oh, I hope I look that good when I die. <laughs> uh, I would kind of nod at that, to be honest with you. Like, yeah. I mean, and yeah. she, she has a thing because, again, I mean, right? Mm. It doesn't normally work like that, but she had like a another body or something. I don't know, she's not really explained it. Sort of look around Isabel. Shrug. <laughs> I would just, I would uh, just uh, and copy Isabel's word. I'm just like, perhaps a, a story for another time. What <laughs> <laughs> uh, impersonating Scooby Doo as <laughs> Raggy? <laughs> um, oh, I don't want the season to just Hannah Barbara. I, I also want it to end. Um, <laughs> but yes, yeah, I think um, Isabel like just looks at you, kind of like a dirty look, Zora, and then she says, "Yes, we are somewhat pressed for time, it would seem." Hmm. Um. About that, um, maybe we should discuss uh, what the next plan is then. I think um, Tanaido goes, Why are there no chairs in this room if it's going to take this long? Uh, it's good for that. She looks around, just like disappointedly at the lack of seating. And she just decides to sit on the table, like cross legged. They're very utilitarian kind of people, and they don't really go in for furnishings. Yes. One must be stood up straight when speaking to the, the officers. She just still like gets herself comfy while crossing her legs on the uh, the table and just sits. Well, um... So obviously we have a few things that are kind of pressing. It might be best if we address them all. Independently, 
Did you kill the dragon? We can. Oh uh, no! Mm -hmm. Oh. Touches on it. Oh. Um. What? Hmm. She just looks at you. Hmm. So weird. Weird. Got some things that might help next time we try. Oh. So it turns around. Walks back, walks back to the table. So, who's that, though? Uh, oh, we didn't explain. That's real, uh, Nix. I always Nix five, and now I'm weird. But are you still Nix five, or are you just weird? Uh, I take the name of weird, signifying my significant departure from that previous identity. Oh. I I'm still Alice, though. Yes. But when you changed, you would have had the opportunity, if you wanted to, to assume you right, may be fitting your form. And I took that opportunity. Oh. She looks down at herself and says, Sh Should I have? Do, um, um, That's an individual choice. Hmm. And she kind of just looks. Choose who you want to be. She looks over at Lycan and she's like, "Do I still look like an Alice?" Uh, I, I guess. She kind of like makes a face like that I was a so. not a very satisfying answer. And then I she goes, think, what, wait, what, what kind of color? Like, what colors are here? Is it like metallic-y? Uh, I'll show you. Um, this should... Oh, just like the EI all the same way, Jane. I, no, because remember, she's been, she's went through uh, several departures. No. Um, sort of. So, there it is in the handouts somewhere, NPC handouts. Right, so we started off with this one. And then she went into her suit of armour and changed it significantly, and now she looks like this. Okay, right. And that here is roughly accurate? Yeah. Okay, in that case I would say... Just slightly uh, better dressed, I would say. Alice, you know, kind of sounds, you know, a bit more like something would fit, like, you know, her, points at Isabel. She could, she she looks more like an Alice, I guess. Because that's goes, the fuck's wrong with Isabel? <laughs> you know, nothing, nothing wrong with. What does that look like? <laughs> it's her nice name. You know, she's just very. You know, you know, she's sort of like um, you know. You Wait, know. Do I look like a zig? Yeah. Oh, okay. Definitely. The queen nods while she's like cross-legged with her like her eyes shut. <laughs> she seems like she's meditating right now. I am, um, but she just it's nods perfect. when Zig asks that question. <laughs> So no, um, it's it's, yeah. it's it's uh, it's a name, and uh, you know, n n not everyone's name's gonna like one hundred percent fit their appearance. You know, you don't hear Lyco and picture this. I mean, I would, I would snag it at this. <laughs> I look like a female. <laughs> 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 I mean, mo most of the Lycos I knew were kind of you know really uh, kind of you know just boring looking kind of you know. Hmm. So, it's popular name. She turns. Was. She turns back to weird, and then she says, "Do you remember what next five remembers? Or remembers? Yes. I guess. I I have all of his memories and feelings, and there's not. I suppose it's probably." Almost better to say that X Five was always weird in a sense, and now the form better fits his uh, evolving representation of himself. Like me. Agreed. <laughs> what was that? <laughs> so to mute Colin, I said. What was Colin saying? Doesn't matter. Okay. So Alice said, uh, "Like me." 
Do you? Yes. I guess so. And she kind of like squeezes up her face like she's still trying to process the whole thing. Um, and she's not entirely sure. And she says, Okay, so you were next five, but you were weird the whole time. And now you get to be weird. Yeah. I suppose that's accurate. Now that I've realised this is who I need to be. Okay. I see you just randomly bark. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> Tells her a side effect of a uh, weird personality. She just randomly barks. Um, she, um, kind of just nods. And she's like, right, okay. Um, so is this where he ever do was then? Like, not fighting dragons, but like, finding weird. No, this took about two minutes. Oh. Hmm. I mean, the pill pillow joke took me about a day to think about. And she just points to the pillow under her arm. I'll, I'll send you an e-book on humour. Okay. I found it helpful. <laughs> you just see Finn shaking his head. <laughs> oh god, no. <laughs> 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 But yes, and then it's uh, uh, Finn and says, I believe there was something to discuss, though. Yes? Uh, yes. Um, so, we have to deal with the egg, but we also need to deal with stuff on verses. We kind of still need to deal with stuff and kind of point down. Alice just starts shaking her head. No, no, it was just a pillow. <laughs> just holds up the <laughs> pillow. Oh no, no. There's, there's, there's still the, the ever-growing mountain of problems to deal with. Oh. That being just a pal is just... Oh, never mind. Never mind. <laughs> what were you doing then, if you didn't do <gasps> anything then? Well, we um, got beaten up by a dragon man. Um, we met for Nida, I'll point towards Nida. She just, like, again, without opening her eyes, she just lifts one of the hands off of her knees and waves, like, you know, indicating who she is. Uh, she's a queen, by the way. Um, oh. Does she know about the other queen? Uh, yeah. Does she know the other queen got drank? Okay. Does she know that? I think so. <laughs> okay. Everyone's just staring at the two of you like with this flick full whisper volume. <laughs> uh, I think Zig's head's noticeably just darting between mm -hmm. them as they whisper to each other. <laughs> um, and then we were kind of... Um, Stranded on Castleville, and then um, we got a, a shuttle to act on. And then, yeah, I'll just present the planet, you know, a mm. gesture, the presentation gesture. And then, Where's Craig? Uh, he's, yeah. He was left in the uh, the shuttle bay, remember? That's right. Mm -hmm. Probably okay, a mistake, but okay. <laughs> He's gonna come back with a mech. It's just gonna be the scene <laughs> from Aliens. <laughs> <laughs> He's wrapped up all the shot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Built himself a robot alien to fight as well. <laughs> Get away from her, you Karen. Oh no. No. <laughs> no. Oh dear. We're gonna have to start implementing a fucking timeout system. Um, <laughs> but yes, so, um,. You gesture to, you know, assume the, uh, like the planet, etc. to yeah, gesture yeah. towards that, and then she goes, Okay, um, I, I just wandered around the ship for a bit, to be honest. Oh. Yeah. Um, 
Good. I was I was worried. Uh, I mean that's nice, but I I was here. But Finn kept me company. He just looks awkward. And I and she kind of does that thing where she full whispers again. She's it's not very um. Doesn't know any good jokes. Basky eye. Yeah. <laughs> I am. Um, he's not like me. <laughs> she kind of like side eyes him a bit. What about more streamlined? No. And she just shakes her head. She's like, no, no, he's, he's not like me. I don't... I think that's a good thing. You can just nod her head, like, affirmatively. I don't think many AI are. <laughs> she looks at herself and she's like, I'm not really sure that's what I am anymore. I'm pretty sure you're right about that. <laughs> mm. Um... I did think about, you know, coming to look for you all, but I, I didn't. I didn't know where to look, so I, I didn't move from where we were in case you came back looking for us, or that weird golden door thingy would just appear in space and you would all die. It's probably for the best. Um. It was really tricky working out where the door was since we were orbiting the planet, though. So, <laughs> she's just been trying to keep an alignment yeah. for like the whole time. <laughs> well, no, because the door wouldn't be necessarily relevant to the planet, right? Or relative, sorry, to the planet. So, like, it might be an objectively relevant, like, relative point. Um, so, yeah. Like, she's obviously had this nightmare of a headache trying to work out that. <laughs> oh, poor Alice. Poor, poor Alice. Um, so, how did you manage to say Shane in the last... Uh, Honestly, it's been less than three weeks. It's been, like, possibly, like, maybe just over a week, right? I think. Right. Um... Yeah, since you've seen her, <laughs> just about, yeah. I mean, just safely say it's been a week, yeah, seven days. It's good to see you, but you kept yourself uh, occupied. <coughs> the pillow helped. She kind of nods and holds up the pillow again. <laughs> uh, oh, two seconds, sorry. No. And then she kind of turns to everything and goes, so what is there to, to talk about? If, like, what what's... This mountain of problems. Do we need to go on a hike? Uh, I mean, that, that might come up at some point. I wouldn't really that out. Hmm. A lot of planets. In fact, probably all of them have mountains. I think. And she says and thinks like that. You know, I've only been to one planet. Huh. And she just thinks about that for a bit. Sometimes we forget that you're so... young? She just, win she just winks at you. Hmm. Yeah, anyway, we've got, um, we've got some situations coming up in, uh... Eox and uh, Draxus and uh, yeah, there's some ongoing stuff on an Akaton that we might have to address and we probably need to check in with Verses and at least some of us will probably be going to the sun. I don't really know how you can go to the sun but I don't know, Zig seems pretty happy with it. So. I mean, Verses is the only one I've been to so I wouldn't mind going to more Mm. Well, I guess we got to split up the crew somehow. So, and she kind of just looks like instantly like disheartened by that, and she's like, "But we just got back together." 
Um, at least you won't be alone this time. I wasn't yeah. alone last time. I had Finn. Finn just like again awkwardly shifts and stands. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but we all know he's a stick in the mud, isn't that right, Finn? He just looks at you incredulously. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, Captain. It's fine, it's fine. I know humour is in the end of the best vocabulary, it's fine. If indeed you mean I was not specifically tailored to entertain a crew, then you would be correct, Captain. Yes. And he looks at Alice and he says, <laughs> Not that I could exactly state what tailoring my programming to entertain Miss Alice would entail. Uh, uh, she just kind of turns and goes, Thank you. When you find that out, do tell me. So, uh, where to first? Well, Thanida, your vessel just opens I one of our eyes, like you know. I mentioned previously it might be worth utilizing it to uh, go to somewhere that we feel is less high risk, because obviously it's not it's not heavily armored or armed, but. It's capable of, of long flights. Indeed, it is, and I would be more than happy to ferry you to where you need to go. Versys may be a worthwhile place for you to visit, since um, obviously you're still to reannounce your, your presence to the world, and there are some people there that might be worth encountering. Um, and potentially less hostile ele elements of the Vesk, uh, some officers of the stewards, um, their, their structure is obviously a bit in disarray at the moment, but at the very least I'm sure the Babak is there and that would be a helpful contact as he knows me and more or less trusts me. Oh yeah, and your girlfriend's there too. A shock loss. <clears throat> I, I haven't heard from her in a few weeks because she's not my girlfriend. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> and then Alice just kind of like looks at you and winks and goes, "So you're a single then?" I mean, do I look like a guy that dates? I think um, Isabel just coughs like she's hiding, like covering up something she was um, clearly thinking too loudly. Um, and then just kind of clears her throat after it. <clears throat> we seem to be derailing this somewhat, perhaps. That was her fault. <laughs> like, I think both Isabel and Alice draw you like a dirty look briefly. Um, the This isn't helpful anyway look. And uh, Isabel says, we need to get the solar egg to the sun. That's our primary concern. Get that back to Grace, and then we will go about trying to, I don't know, fix everything else. She kind of gestures vaguely. That's definitely a zig thing. And a you thing. She kind of nods and then looks at Zig for like an affirmative like reply. I think it kind of just nods. So. They kind of like a slow agreeing nod. And she looks around and goes, Are we taking this ship there? Or are we taking. She looks at Sanida. Her ship. Mm. Captain, I gotta suggest that they take this one. If. If the egg does come under threat. Better that they be able to defend themselves rather than just run. It's true. There's a rather flashy entrance when we're trying to stay under the radar. Going to verses. 
Isabel shakes her head and she goes, No, I think you've got that the wrong way around, Zora. The... I think the... <laughs> arrival of a Vesk transport ship such as this to the burning sun would be quite a statement in itself, despite how much more secure the egg may be in a vessel like this. You think then that we should uh, switch it up? I suppose there is a, or has been, at least until recently, a heavy vest presence in Versi, so what's one more ship? Especially when it's one that came from there, right? I think Sanaida, like, who's just sat on the table at this point, still with, like, her eyes closed, kind of, like, you know, meditating and whatnot, just says to the room in general, It is best to blend in with like things. And then just continues doing whatever the hell she's up to. And that poses a problem of... Would you be fine with them using your ship in either? If you do indeed want to go to Versys. She opens her eyes and she says, I think it would be best I stuck with my vessel to operate it. To save any issues. If problems arose, they would need somebody familiar with the systems. We could probably patchwork some sort of communication. I mean, you could bring Craig along and he can help out. Alice obviously perks up, like, who's Craig? I would just be like, oh no. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> um, someone should, someone should. Uh, I would let her just be walking past you. Like, yeah. Because like. <laughs> we left him alone and that's, that can be. Craig's, um, he's, um, he, he's, he's kind of a, um, a major player on the, the online information brokering and the, the privacy and fear and the, uh, also... I think Finn cuts you off and turns to Alice and says, I believe they're referring to the Skittermander in the shuttle bay. He is a Skittermander too. But Alice right. then is like, oh my god, cool! That's really cool! What's a Skittermander? Uh, a little sick, solid koala. You would know what koala is. I've I, I done some geography lessons, alright? Do you even know what a koala is? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what a koala is. Out of character. <laughs> <laughs> I think it might be some sort of wombat. Um, <laughs> in, in character, though, actually, um, hey, um, do you, I mean, you're, you're, you're a VESC program, Finn. Do you understand them, Skittermanders? I think he just looks to the captain briefly, and then looks back at, um, Michael. Says, the Skittermanders are very difficult to understand their intentions rather than their motivations. They seem to enjoy teamwork, regardless of the outcome. I, I meant, like, can you understand what they're saying? He just looks back to the captain, and then looks back to Lyco, and he says, No. <laughs> I'm right. probably look at him look back straight away as well, just to both of you just look at him. <laughs> <laughs> no, we don't understand the man. <laughs> I like the idea that it's like a weird pride thing that even the programmed AI of the Vesk still like, mm, maybe don't admit weakness though. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if we, uh, if we can ever like figure that one out, we should definitely upload it. Or should we? Is that what we want? Yeah, because then more people would be able to talk to them and then they might understand what they want. Like pillows. Uh, yeah, but I mean... Do we do we really want the Vesk to have a better understanding of their subject? No offence, Captain. Um, I think Thanida speaks up at that point and says, I think if somebody is to rule over someone, a very deep understanding of their subjects would be desirable. 
kill the point of yes. <laughs> Otherwise, I'm rebellion sorry. is bred within them. I mean, I guess uh, there were obvious benefits, but uh, you know, she's obviously speaking as the queen in the group. Um, you know, there's 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 um. There might be concerns about the, what the Vesk might do with some sort of certain information that might make them potentially more dangerous. No offense to uh, the Vesk inclined to us. I think Salaya then continues and says, aren't we trying to ally ourselves with some of these Vesk within the system? Oh yeah. Then wouldn't you wish them a greater understanding of your situation? I mean, I would still be cautious of what information I passed along to any ally, especially one that uh, had previously invaded the system. Not the captain. The captain's, the captain's good. <laughs> Alice just gives the captain a thumbs up. <laughs> I think I previously invaded your system. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thank you. <laughs> I mean, look, we've all had jobs in the past we regret. Um, <laughs> or currently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wouldn't blame that. I wouldn't even fault that. <laughs> and okay, then, so. I think Alice sorry. is like, so like Alice, like on that kind of like topic, I guess. Then puts in with the looks at the captain after giving the thumbs up to the, you know, the captain's good. Who's all right, you know? And then she goes. Sometimes you have to lie to people. Can just nods for the uh, good of the crew. Uh, pff, y yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then she turns uh -huh. to Finn and she's like, "You see, Finn, I told you it was fine to lie to them." And he just looks at you, Captain, and then looks at her and goes, "Indeed, ma'am." Ah, uh, another one, cuts. <laughs> <laughs> I think Sanaida like gets off the table, puts a hand on your shoulder, and says, "Yet you seem to have so many," and then just goes to leave the room. Ah, uh, I will wait. Go get Craig. <laughs> I'm <would> just sigh. <laughs> go get Craig. And then, like, I think I was like, maybe you and Sanaida are in the corridor. Maybe you're walking down like one of the corridors at this point, and she says, "Am I free to explore?" And she kind of just like rubs her hand against like the cold metal of one of the walls. God damn you, bud. Uh, <laughs> uh, go ahead. Uh, tell me if, I find, if you find out interesting, because I've even had a proper chance to explore myself. You know. She just kind of smiles, kind of like politely, and she says, I shall see what I can find. This is very interesting. And then she just like wanders off randomly. Pretty sure she's still barefoot, right? Like, probably. I feel um, there was a dress, but I don't think there were any shoes. Yeah, like I feel like she has just in a like a sl like a slightly torn dress, right? Um, so yeah, she just wanders, I guess. Um, and yeah, you head to the shuttle bay again. <laughs> yeah, so I think we just kind of skip to the the shuttle bay, and uh, yeah, there is a pile of stuff in the middle of the room. It seems Craig. to have um, like sparks coming out of it. Craig. And then you just see the little blue head pop out of the middle of it all. And then goes Please back goes back into the pile. <laughs> you just see the sparks again. Please don't tear a hole in the ship that we need to fly through space in. Just more sparks. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, what the hell are you even doing anyway? Don't go look. Yeah, so like as you kind of like approach the pile, um, like the top of it slightly like, sinks a bit as he like kind of backs out of it, um, and he kind of looks up at you, and then with some of his hands he just gestures to the pile like ta da, um, 
and uh, like one of his hands is holding like one of the welding tools that has been kind of taken off like the wall in the background, and uh, he just says. <laughs> <laughs> it is like it looks like a pile of um what could have been spare parts in the room, but all like in various states of like dismantled and maybe repurposed. Just just don't don't tear apart the shuttles or the ship. Okay, like as you're yeah. saying that he looks around at like one shuttle. And then at the other shuttle. And then he kind of like shakes his head like really kind of like vigorously. Goes <laughs> and points back to the pile. Uh, like just, just the pile they was yeah. working right mm-hmm. uh, what, the, what the hell is that? He's not told about the shuttle. Our shuttle was already, has he? And then he, he starts slowly like walking around, like picking up the parts that are maybe slightly a bit away from the like the pile, and like starts putting them onto the pile, as he's just slowly like defensively keeping himself between you and the pile. <laughs> so don't take my stuff. <laughs> <laughs> this is my stuff. Then. <laughs> come, come with me, Craig. Let's go meet the crew. Alice. And he looks at the pile, then looks at you, then looks at the pile, then looks up it'll at you. Be, it'll be there when you get back. And then he, he starts saying, <laughs> points at you, <laughs> and then he turns around and points at the pile, and he goes, <laughs> and points at himself. <laughs> oh, I don't even know where these parts have came from. <laughs> he's, he's <laughs> Ow. <laughs> <laughs> He's absolutely torn apart the shuttles. Oh well. Uh, um, thank God we don't need shuttles. <laughs> I mean, yeah, right. Um, I mean, that is still unconfirmed, quite frankly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think you can safely assume he's just trying to make sure that this is his pile of stuff. <laughs> I'm just like, come, come, and put my, put my arm down. And he, like, he shakes his head and he's like, <laughs> points at you. And then points at him, then points at the pile, then points back at him, and goes... Uh, it's, it's, it's like I said, though, but then when you get back, you can work on it later. Come. He narrows his eyes, and then goes... <laughs> and puts a thumb up to you. <laughs> He's still holding out his thumb at you, like aggressively. <laughs> I'll put my thumb out back. He kind of nods, and then... Uh, Walks towards you and does the grabby hands. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was just a great I won't move. <laughs> Agree with me. <laughs> you listen. <laughs> no. I do not move unless you say this is mine. <laughs> you wonder who conquered who, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I do like the idea of a species like surviving conquest just by being too annoying to deal with. <laughs> <laughs> It's why the Scaramanders are one of the best things Starfinder have done, to be honest. Uh, so yes, I will. I will give. I will, I will bring my hand in, so you can. Yeah. Grab your I, hand. He climbs up then, and he climbs up and sits on like you know your shoulders, and as you're leaving the room, he just turns back and waves goodbye with two of his hands <laughs> to the pile. <laughs> <laughs> ah, fantastic! I love it. Yeah, I'll head back to the, the there briefing room. Is there any conversations in the briefing room that happen while the Queen and, uh, you know, Thanida are out of the room? Hi-o! Um, at all. Uh, you know what? I'll ask Alice. So, um, what'd you make of the Queen? Struggling not to make the same joke again. Um, <laughs> she goes, yeah, I know. um... I like that she doesn't wear shoes. That seems comfy. Uh, huh. But yeah. she she doesn't wear a crown either. Hmm. Mm. True. Hmm. Should we she get her a crown? Yeah. I think she'll probably want to do that herself. 
Is that how that works? Do queens get their own crowns? I just thought somebody would have one ready for you. I don't think... I don't think there's course. anything left of the uh, previous one. <laughs> oh, true. I suppose... I suppose Himani probably drank the crown. Probably. I wonder what a crown tastes like. Bad, I would think. Metallic, I imagine. Mm. And then, like, she looks at you and she's like, Yeah, but... Mm. A lot of things taste metallic, though. Or they did. She kind of screws up her face like she doesn't understand what she's even saying anymore. I guess that's the issue with a metal mouth. Right. And, um... She's like, um... What do you make of the Queen? She winks at you and finger guns from the hip. Me? Yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> You're her finger gun buddy. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, yeah, she's... She's kind of intense. She, she's okay. She's kind of, yeah, kind of intense. Sometimes a little scary. But, uh... She's been really, um... Accommodating, and um, um, I, uh, yeah, no, I, I, I like her. She's I just am a little on guard sometimes because she can be quite, yeah, intense is a word. We're just gonna um, kick him from the server just now, yeah. <laughs> just the absolute terrible joke. She camps a lot. My god, welcome back. Forgive me. <laughs> she camps a lot. Terrible. Um, <laughs> but anyway, um. Sorry. Yeah, so like Alice kind of like nods slowly to everything you're saying, like, oh, like very sagely. And she's like. So. If she's the queen. Of what? Like, space? Um, you know, her people. Drow things. Right. Oh, I suppose because the other queen got drank. We need another yeah. queen. Well, that was good that you found another queen. It wasn't a difficult search, to be fair. Because the previous one had her with her stuff locked away. Oh, like a backup queen. Huh? <laughs> you know... Sort of, but not on purpose. There was a weird tree. I don't know. It was magic stuff, and I didn't like it. She just looks over at me and goes, You had a tree? There was a tree in the box, but it's been burned now. Oh. Mm. Sounds like you did a lot. It's been kind of hectic. We didn't mean to. They ate poisoned noodles. Oh, how did it taste? Yeah, um, I mean, they tasted fine until you know radiation. Hmm. I don't know what any of that tastes like. I don't think I've had noodles. You should. You should do that. We'll do that. We'll take you to that. Weird can show you his old plants. Do they need to be poisoned? No, no. No, that, that was the big thing. It's not a requirement. Okay. Pretty sure poison's bad. Hmm. I think they could hold his stomach and be like, yeah. Or useful. I agree. Anyway, I, uh... I wonder, so, if we do split the crew between two ships, and obviously we can't be in two places at one time, who goes where? I think at that point, this is maybe when Zora and CC enter the room. Um, big loot. Nope. Jump off the. Jump off the weird. No, jump off. <laughs> jump off the weird. <laughs> jump off the weird. Um, and say. Well. I guess the sun. Yeah. Down yeah. on the table. 
I am shocked. Shocked by this thing. I didn't, I didn't expect that at all. See, I kind of thought that's what he would say because he's from the sun. I was, I was doing a joke. Oh. The, the sarcasm. The pillow one. There's a chapter there. on that in the book. Okay. It's in the book, yeah. And she looks at the cats and she goes, You have a new hat. Uh, no, this is, this is DC. She just waves. He just waves. That's the exchange. This is Alice. You just like feel him tap on your head a couple of times, and then just say, ah, da, 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 and then just taps yes, on your that. head a bit. He uh, he understands like common perfectly, so you can speak to him, uh, but he, he he won't speak back or can't speak back. I'm not sure if they can physically actually speak other languages or if they just choose not to. Huh, He's the only one I've met. Scared, <laughs> And she, um, she kind of nods, and she just hands up the pillow to him, and he just takes the pillow and puts it on over his head, and just leans forward onto it, and just rests <laughs> his head on the pillow on the top of Zora's head. Very grumpy look in my face. <laughs> With a pillow on your head. <laughs> <laughs> um, appreciate this. I think he likes the pillow. Uh, he likes a lot of things. Um, so, um, about the splitting up of the ship, I guess. Oh, I did look for Ivan. Oh? Oh? Yeah. Uh, how did that go? Well, I didn't find him. Is not a cargo? Oh yeah. I didn't look there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> the yeah, the planet moved. Uh, so it'll do that. Yeah. And the the doorway was well, it, w it was somewhere. So we stayed there. That's mm -hmm. fair. And I got harder to look at the planet. Yeah, he's probably still there. I mean, I don't, I don't really know what oozes do other than ooze. We'll find him. Well, I haven't ate a lot. Yeah, especially if you throw things at him. Um, mm. he gave as much as he took. There was a lot of car parts in the the, the shop. Maybe it kept him busy. Maybe he just ate the whole place. He's become a, a, a local hero for like th their their um, garbage problem. Um, Maybe he replaced the diner. Mm. <laughs> Eat the diner, spat out a uh, like steakhouse. So I did try and well. No, I can wait. And she just turns back like as if she wasn't even about to say anything. And she goes, Where to first? And she looks at Zig and smiles. Well, myself and I guess she looks over at Isabel. And then I guess between Isabel and Thanida as well. Thanida's not in the room, remember? She oh, went. she's not in the room. I thought she, she went for all explore. Yeah. yeah, sorry. Um. She did say like she was willing to ferry somebody to wherever they had to go, so like that as far as she was concerned, that's where she checked out. Yeah. Um and he'd say, Well we're we're heading to Sun. Looks up at weird. I think it makes more sense for me to go to the Sun. I think Zig looks a little relieved at that. Um just kind of like ah. And then looks looks back at Alice and just kind of smiles. Alice just winks at you. As much as I feel like, well, as much as I would really like to go visit the sun, uh, I'm, I'm probably the best going to Versus. 
agreed, and I'm probably also best in Versus. Yeah, there's a lot of Vesk on Versus just now. Mm. That's it, that's all she says to the room. So, me and Cap, the Versus. Sounds, sounds like we've got a, a number of people who are inclined to go to the uh, sun. Um, Where should I go? Yeah, Alice kind of just good. like just turns to everybody. Where would you like to go? Um. Um. Hmm. She kind of turns back to Zora, and she says, "Where do you need me, Captain?" Like really, kind of like you know, cadet, eager, ask. Um. Feel free to go to the sun. We will if you want. A change of view. It'll be pretty sneaky covert stuff going on in verses. So I mean, what if nothing. you need? What if you need somebody to? You know, talk to computers. Oh, the other, the other, uh, uh. You know, I used to, <laughs> I used to be one, and she like elbows you in like the chest and kind of laughs to herself. Uh, I mean, just, uh, I mean, she's, she's just also, if he was the other one, and now it's weird, if he's gone to the sun, do you won't have him to talk to computers for you on on verses. So to come with us, because my, my technophobe just came out of me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, s you say all this with a pillow on your head, and on yeah. the system's possibly like maybe best hacker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, true as well. I do forget about CC being a ridiculous hacker. <laughs> it's very uh, easy to forget that, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, um... I, I suppose it's banking on whether or not CC will actually take orders yeah. to, to hack into something. Mm. Whether he's more of a liberal, uh... Between hacker. the two of you, we should be pretty well, um... We should be pretty well equipped in their regard, and, uh, yeah, Weird can handle anything on the other side, I'm sure. Not that I imagine they're gonna have to be doing too much in that. Way. I, th I think, by all accounts, it should be a pretty friendly and atmosphere you're walking into, right? Flashback to is graduate. one of <laughs> them, right? This is your, you guys, you, you have your sun temple. I think Zig just sort of nervously laughs, like, huh, y yeah. He'll be fine, Isabel says confidently to the room, you know. In an attempt to maybe try and cover up the fact that Zig's having a mini breakdown. And then, yeah, and Isabel's obviously connected to them, and, and, and weird, you have some sort of knowledge? I, I don't know. Yes. And then came Isabel oh, just says, and Isabel just again says, it's hard to say, really. Between you, you should be pretty well equipped to handle the place. Yep, we can handle this. Um, uh, Isabel says it still leaves the problem of which ship. Although, what are the capabilities of this other vessel that the Nida possesses? It's got an amazing bathtub. <laughs> mm. It's a pleasure. No boat. weapons. Um, but comfy. Oh. Okay. Is it in fact entirely wise then? Oh, and she kind of like gets frustrated with herself because she's kind of in a bind. She's like, "Do we take the obvious warship to the sun with the obvious target in it being the egg, or do we take the pleasure yacht that's the most vulnerable in the hopes that it's overlooked?" And she kind of like just. And uh, I think that maybe rings her out of her little mini fit that she was about to have, and then she mm -hmm. goes, "Right, okay." And 
you think you require the Vesk ship to get to Versus without raising too many questions? Um. So just blend them in the crowd, right? The night is probably right about that. Yeah. Hmm. And about to make getting in touch with uh, Matva a hell of a lot easier. Ah, sir. Yes. You in fact have a message addressed to you. Ah. Um, it I is marked. Another thing hasn't gone wrong. It is marked quite private. It is why I didn't bring it up until now. Um. Bring it up. He kind of just, like, twitches a bit. <laughs> and he says, hey, Zora, I've got this rash. <laughs> and um, he says, unfortunately, I can't. It is marked private. This room is, in fact, not private. Ah, fine, fine. Um, I'll take it in my quarters when we're done here. Very good, sir. I will make sure to show you to your quarters when we are done here. <laughs> I'll give a nod. You may wish to re remove Alice's things from the room. <laughs> and, and Alice is like, Alice just looks at you and goes, Well, it was the biggest room. And I wasn't allowed to sleep on the bridge. I guess I should look at my quarters. I assume I have quarters. I didn't really get a look at this ship. And then Finn says, Shall I assign all of your guests quarters, Captain? All of, all of the crew, yes. Yes. Am I adding everyone to the crew roster, Captain? Yes. Indeed. Yes, seems like it's a good course of action. Any kind of nods. I I will require you to fill in the specifics, of course, but I will forward that on to your quarters also. Okay. You guys just like, nod again. You guys just nod. <laughs> hey, Furler, you're officially part of the team. She does like the motion of her like waving a flag side to side. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, <stop>. Yay, <laughs> so patronizing, jeez. <laughs> I mean, she was kind of expecting to like get in here, get to the sun, you know. And we've we've talked about <laughs> fake pregnancies. <laughs> but we should have known what she was getting on board with. She's met us before. Yeah. She's died for years before, yeah. <laughs> she may as well expect to die again. Um, <laughs> so, um. <laughs> Isabel says, right, so, the kid, the four-armed guy, me, and who else? I guess the, the queen? Mm. If we're taking the pleasure yacht. That seems like she won't go anywhere without it. What if we get into trouble? I mean, I can handle so much but and she kind of like turns like weird and zig well I mean you've got like a a walking tank and you've got zig you'll be fine she kind of just looks and goes I haven't seen much of this version of you weird but your previous version didn't reassure me with your combat prowess. I hope you take no offence in this, but I do very much regard the safety of this egg very, very highly. The nerve. You just power shamed you. The martial capabilities of Nick Spy were enough to carry you out of that vault. God. So, how about we make it an effort not to get into conflict so I don't have to do it again. She 
she looks at you, she looks at you and she says, Perhaps if your martial capabilities hit the mark, I wouldn't have to be <coughs> carried out. But I agree. Avoiding conflict, she lets that word hang for obvious current relevance, would be beneficial to our cause, but I am trying to prepare for the worst outcome given that our track record and she looks at the whole room. Yes, you have a tendency to run headfirst in and seek a violent solution. I recall how we met. And I recall how we departed last time. And it was me trying to save your ineffectual ass. I think you just like, <laughs> Zara, you just hear like gentle clapping slowly above uh, your head. Hey, you weren't there. <laughs> <laughs> Is this like Lyco talking to CC? Yeah. And then CC's like still like clapping with like his middle two hands, his bottom two holding on to Zora. And he points at you, Lyco, at his top hand, and then he points mm. at both of them. And he just slowly starts clapping again. Just... I... At least he's having fun. Anyway, <laughs> look, we didn't exactly do the best work uh, in the vault, and I do appreciate that that had uh, particularly negative consequences for, for Isabel, but uh, uh, the reality is we could all have handled the situation better. We were unprepared. We went in a rush, and I appreciate that we had very little time, but we shouldn't have. We weren't prepared for the type of enemies we were facing. I was frankly poorly <laughs> equipped for close quarters fighting. It was a mess. I no. left you for two weeks on verses to make preparations, and I come back to you having started a garage. That was preparation. She, like, screws up her face like she wants to say more on that, obviously, but she doesn't. Um, and she says, I think lingering over past mistakes isn't exactly going to resolve this current issue. And she just looks too weird, waiting on some kind of like response. Well, perhaps you should stop throwing roadblocks into this conversation then, and let's get moving. Just narrows her eyes at you. And she says, I have been trying to move this conversation along. And that's why you started the criticism? Yes, because analysing capabilities could potentially avoid repetition of dire consequences we have experienced firsthand. I hope your next body has a better social sense. Likewise. Yeah, I kind of knew she was going to say that. Look. Again. Errors were made. Let's she puts her hand up and she like dismisses that. Like, and she's like, I'm not offended by him. At least this way he's got two extra hands. He can carry somebody else that he gets killed out. He has only advanced since then. It's been a short period of time, but you can see the change has been considerable. And he's always been extremely competent in a number of areas. He does have a tendency to wildly fire plasma, but, you know, um, he's a durable combatant if it comes to that. And he does have a big scary gun even if he doesn't always hit with them. Um, which is built in, and that's really handy. You'll also have the assistance of Zig here, and I, I, don't, I don't mean to toot his horn, but I, I, I've seen what he can do to people if he needs to. Alice got momentarily excited at the idea that Zig had somehow got a horn, <laughs> I, but then as soon as you'd mentioned what he's capable of, like she kind of like shut up a bit again, given what happened to her. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. The kid's a powerhouse. The only problem you're going to have there is he might not always be comfortable using his powers. No offense, Zig. 
None taken. Add to that yourself. You've shown yourself to be quite a capable fighter with your fancy mecha belt. And presumably you have the knight at your side. And if roused to fight, she's clearly quite dangerous. Um, I think your I think your chances are pretty good against a lot of things. The main concern I would have is if the ship came under direct attack from another ship, in which case I would prefer that you had this vehicle. But unfortunately, I don't think we quite have the time to retrofit this pleasure yacht in any meaningful way, nor the resources. Well, then, if we agree that the best way is to um, attract as little attention as possible, then that leaves you with with that pleasure a lot, and uh, us with the Vesk, whatever class this thing is. No, the other problem. Chain of command. She looks straight to Zora. If you're leading your crew. On Can't this we all vessel. Just be friends? <laughs> <laughs> She's right, you can't lead a party when you're not in it. Uh, you gotta delegate. I think Weird's got it. She raises an eyebrow and then turns to Weird. And she says, Is that right? He's still. In least attached to the situation. Well, she's, so she's, she's she, like, that was directed at weird, just like, physically, I mean, like, she, like, she turned to, you know, weird as if, is that right, you know? I, 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 would, I will object, though, it says, well, he is the least attached to this situation. Should be able to make decisions without emotion getting involved. Attachment doesn't always necessarily mean that you will make mistakes, it just means that you may in fact care enough to follow something through that matters. It would be a very rational choice to cut one's losses and leave a situation that could still be won through passion. Of all the people you surround yourself with, I think I'm the one that has never lacked commitment nor moral integrity on these matters. I merely asked I, if you had this in hand. With these hands, yes. If that's what it takes to get this mission underway, then yes. I will follow his command. She just kind of nods very briefly. Okay, so... That was relatively painless. I think it's obvious that the Knight will wish to be in control of her ship. Uh, but she'll probably minimize her role outside of the ship, because frankly I don't know how much she wants to get herself involved. But she may want to introduce herself. Um, I don't see her being a problem. If you're happy following, then I'm sure that'll all work out. Um, I don't speak for her, so I cannot agree with you. Oh, I know. But I'm just thinking of the uh, potential complicating factors, and uh, yeah. So if we take Alice and CC, I think this can work. It sounds like a plan. I'm gonna go and see if this shuttle is still functionable. Then, and then off she walks. Or functioning, I guess, is the word. Ahem. And off she, like, walks. And she kind of, like, as she's walking around the table towards the door, she goes, Anything else I need to know? Mm, I would shake my head. <laughs> the vessel I'm going to has supplies, I assume. It's well stocked to get us there. Uh, I'm the most. Yeah, it is pretty luxuriously stocked. we talk about the ducks, the liner. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Pleasure. Mm -hmm. And she um, is still, is still stocked. Uh, stocked on. She then turns into weird and says, "I'll see you on the shuttle then." And then off she walks. Mm. 
<laughs> Isabel leaves the room. Heavy sigh. She didn't like McGee the really, elite, did she? <laughs> she didn't like a lot of what just happened. She went along with it, though. Apologies if I offended any of you. She got my back up. What, with the uh, moral integrity and yada yada? Oh, no, no, you're, you're completely right. Um, <laughs> Yes. I um I only have one small concern. Uh, Sig, you've been kind of a little bit out of sorts. Is all this talk of going home? Is is this a a potential issue for you? It'll be fine. Don't worry. I think Sig would kind of. Um give uh, an attempt of a reassuring smile. Um, I think Alice just smiles back at you, to be honest. <laughs> well, here we are, the crew back together. Plus CC points at CC. CC points back at you, not really kicking in what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Um, I think Alice then says, I guess um, I'll go get this ship ready then to fly back Give her a nod. to Versus. Um, Be safe. And she kind of turns to you and goes, like she goes to say something and she kind of just like closes her lips and you kind of like nods at you and then um, leaves the room. No. I would sigh. I'd like <laughs> it's somebody to keep an eye on CC while I go check this private message. Sure. <laughs> Finn gestures to himself like he, he doesn't ha like his hand goes through his other hand and then shrugs. <laughs> if it is merely observation you're after, I could direct the surveillance of the interior to him. Uh, you'd be amazed how quickly he could... Well... I think Finn turns to you and just looks you straight in and goes, Sarcasm. I downloaded the book. Ah, ha, hey. ha. Well played. Thank you. Fine, it works for you. Um, a work in progress, you could see. Captain... Give, give him here. Uh, I'll, I'll attempt to, like, lift him off with his pillow. And oh, him. like, yeah, he's definitely clutching the pillow. That was his now. <laughs> <laughs> it was given. I'll, yeah, I'll, 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 like, sling him under one arm if he lets me. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, you've got, like, the pillow under your arm, and he's kind of, like, hugging the pillow, and maybe you're holding him, like, his back okay. with your, your arm. CC, obviously I'm not as big as the captain, so... The, the sitting and the head thing doesn't work as well. So I'm going to do this, if you don't mind. And then uh, it kind of like just kind of wriggles as if he's wanting down. Okay. Uh, should, should I let him? It's not stopped him wriggling. Oh, hold on. <laughs> I'm already walking in the door. I, <laughs> I, 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 I give him to Zig. Uh, <laughs> He doesn't like this. Zig, Zig. It's <laughs> <laughs> like three men, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> it's so awkward. Let um, it down. You're lower down. Um, Cece's just looking between Lyco and Zig like he doesn't understand what's going on. He's just clutching his pillow. <laughs> it's okay. It should be me. It's okay. <laughs> Okay, CC. Everything okay? And then um, he kind of looks at you, and then looks back at Zig, and then looks back at you, Lyco, and he just starts biting the pillow. I think he's good, or maybe bored or annoyed. And you start spitting out whatever was in the pillow, some form of foam, <laughs> probably. <laughs> So those would be feathers. 
Okay, um, I'm gonna, gonna leave him with you. That might be <laughs> hungry. That's a good point. Where's the food on here? You guys have been on here more than I have. Take a nutrient bar out of my leg pocket. I mean, I do question how many of these you have. <laughs> as many as are comedically needed. And then, um, <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. It's the only magic item I have. And I think um, <laughs> Finn said, which is also like not true, isn't your null space chamber a magic item? Um, That's true. Can I have yeah. a null space chamber but with nutrient bars? I mean, you just why not just wear a coat of null space chambers? One of them full of other coats. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and then... Um, one of them just full of garbage, in case you need to make some money on Akaton. Um, yeah, yeah. But yeah. One of them full of turtles. Yes, indeed, but we don't question that one. That one's for reasons un unrevealed. But um, Finn is there and he says, I could direct you to the, you know, canteen, if required. No, need to go find it. It's been a while since I've eaten something good. I cannot guarantee it will be something good. Will it be Better meat? than radioactive noodles. Mm. Quite. <laughs> it's probably not much better than radioactive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I probably will. like some like dry ass crackles if it's or something. Protein, I'm happy. Um, Are any of you in any way chromatically impaired visually? Um, I don't, um, so. I don't know. I don't think any of you are. Basically, like, he's asking. Are you colorblind? I have an enhanced eyes, as long as it's not going to cause an issue with my uh, cybernetic eyes. Merely I would highlight the floor lighting to direct you to the canteen. While you may wander the ship, you will then know your way to the canteen. These lights you, will be in purple. You know that if you instead do the lighting in different patterns, that deals with the chromatic issues that people might face and would therefore make the ship more accessible to a wider audience. <laughs> Finn says, I see you have also read this book. Yes. And then he just flickers out. Weirdly, several times as if indicating some kind of pattern and then vanishes. I don't think he likes me either. Don't worry, I still like you. I hope you pat on the head. Oh, next question. Craig walks up to Zig and pats him on the head as well. Can he reach? I mean, he's got. What's the size difference? I mean, he's got. He's got to climb if he can. So. They're pretty simple. In fact, no, you'll be slightly bigger, Zig, won't you? I think Zig will be slightly bigger than Craig, but probably not by much. To be fair. No. I okay, let's okay. let's go find the. No, I just walk off as I'm muttering that. Yep. Please. Zig, weird. Yeah. Just head off as well. Yeah. Do you just take CC, or are you just gonna leave him? I think yeah. I wait for like like, like kind of motion for CC to come along for food. Mm. <laughs> he kind of just stands there and he looks at you, Zig, and he looks at the uh, the pillow on the floor and he points at it and looks back at you. It'll be there when we get back. <laughs> he screws up his face while he's looking at the pillow, like tilts his head, and then kind of just sits on his backside and crosses like all of his arms and stares at it like angrily. I think um, he's going to go over to the, the pillow. I've started yeah. the mind link countdown never day else, by the way, just so you know. <laughs> um Yeah, and he, he maybe maybe starts to kind of restuff the pillow a little bit. Well like Zig, um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. And then um, CC just and watches. Then just starts um walking out with the pillow. And I think maybe after like a couple of seconds, like CC looks back at where the pillow was and then looks back at the door and then just like slowly gets up and just kind of like walks forward, you know, with his hands in front of him. As if, hey, that's mine. No. Born parent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like, yeah, CC's obviously just going to like follow you 
As long as you don't go too far in front, he's not going to scream at you. Yeah, no, he's, obviously I'm going to... The, the point is to entice CC to come to the, the, the cafeteria. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, right, who's doing what right now that I need to put the camera on? I think it's Zora, maybe, going to some kind of private oh, conversation. Yeah, I think he's probably one who's doing something interesting. <laughs> probably one on around the ship, aimlessly trying to find my uh, quarters. It's, yeah, I didn't get in to show me where my quarters were. <laughs> Although, I, I, I guess I would have probably seen it when I was, like, on the ship. So, yeah, I would head first. I think at some point, like, you walk past, like, a door and then, like, you know, we have the shot of you walking towards the camera and then Finn flickering in behind you. It says, Captain, these would be your quarters. Motioning to the door just next to him. I was just kind of, like, the, the side point, like, oh, what is one? That's, that's one right here? And I'm just kind of... Swavely one. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, again, they're extravagant for Vesk, right? Whatever that means, um, in the sense that there are things here that don't need to be here, but very minimalist still, right? It's very much a case of you'll have things here that other crew members would be expected to get communally. Okay. Okay. We just like Vesque and Decals took a step up since. Last time I was in the home system? Like, I think there would be like co ed bathrooms in terms of um, a Vesk ship, like a big shower room and like locker room type scenario for the Vesk on this crew, the transport ship. Um, there'll be some rooms that are like for important Vesk, but like maybe two of those that aren't the captain's room um, that are for more important guests that get their own facilities. But primarily, this is like a crew transport ship, so. Really, it's a case of everybody jumps in the showers, right? Um, okay. Militant minded, etc. Um, and that's about it, really. So, the very fact that you've got your own facilities is a big deal. Um, yeah. Just getting the game at the. And then, then, obviously, you see all the obvious things that Alice has clearly dragged in here from other parts of the ship. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'll need to clean this place up. Um, Finn says, perhaps you will be more delicate with this collection, though, Captain. I believe this is rather sensitive to Alice. And any motions to the wall where she has drew pictures of everyone? Oh. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that on the wall. Uh, so, this uh, message... Yes, I will deactivate. And then he just flickers off. And then, uh, you know, the kind of calm panel in your room, like, flickers on. And that has, you know, a private message from the event horizon. I will click it. Well, yeah, whatever. Well, like, whatever you do to activate it, yes. <laughs> I sci fi interact with it. And, uh, <laughs> so, yeah, sci fi interact with it. And it comes up with like a kind of um, oscilloscope type of view of just like a sound bar, and um, it's just like a flat line. And then there's the the heavy voice of Matva coming through that says, "The abyss. I will be going dark in regards to a very sensitive operation. I am not willing to discuss even through secure channels. I." Expect results, and I will contact you in due time. And then that's it. That is literally the message. Okay. Well, that's helpful. I would say it myself. <laughs> then, like, uh, once you've kind of done that, I'm flip like Finn flickers back in. Uh, and it says, I trust all is well, Captain. What are your orders? Um, I guess go make sure that, that Alice is fine getting the ship ready and... Um, 
She has spent a significant amount of time familiarizing herself with the functions of this vessel. I have... I felt it best I teach her rather than her explore and learn on her own. And kind of like, his eyes do some interesting things when he's saying all that. Um, like she was going to try and learn either way, either way you know? Um... Yeah, it's probably for the best. Um, just gonna be quite a handful. Um, she is quite fluent in Vesk, it seems. Oh? Was she fluent in Vesk before? I mean... Shrug. I, I, I never knew. And he says... Do not mistake my implication that it was merely language she was fluent in, yet she seems to be able to think Vesk. Oh. And he seems to look confused, like Finn doesn't really know what to do with that information. Um, I, I don't know what to do with that information either. I'm a top of well. Like. <laughs> And like I think like what you can gather like you like what Zora might understand that to mean is that she would do things instinctually that a Vesk would approach something from like a cultural point of view, right? Um whether or not that's good or bad remains to be seen. But that definitely seems to be the implication is that there's a Vesk way of doing things and then there's what the pact worlds do, right? And um he definitely seems to be implying she's more Vesk than Pact World. Ah, uh, that could possibly be my fault, I guess. Um. <laughs> and Finn just says, I was not looking to assign blame, Captain. Merely stating information you will find useful in accommodating your crew. Are we to assign ranks to the crew and thus filter access? Uh, no, no, um, full access for everybody will be fine. We'll be working on a skeleton crew, so it'll be more efficient that way. Excellent. By full access, I assume you mean of a tiered variety. Mm, top tier variety. <laughs> Am I to stop calling you Captain, then? Mm. No, that, that, that'll that be fine. Just give everybody the same rights as the captain, but I'll still be captain. I see, sir, so you wish to be the... I know this is, I know this is confusing. It's, it's, it's completely Shall we perhaps annoying. enter into the log? There is a captain rank 1 and a captain rank 2, and that you will be captain rank 2, and everyone else will be captain rank 1. Yeah, sure. Excellent. I should been. Yeah, sure. Why not? <laughs> Think of like generals, like a two star general and a one star yeah, general. Yeah, yeah. yeah, like I guess is the best way to kind of like. <laughs> and he says, um. And as for crew identity, I assume I was exempt from this. No, you could. You're part of the crew now as well. I am indeed captain, though, it seems. Captain. Ah, you're captain rank one. You've been promoted. Well done. Thank you, captain. <laughs> you see, like, you. his, like, <laughs> hollow display, like, flicker to be a different uniform? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, a, it indicates you're, he's a Vesk captain rank now. <laughs> um, whatever that looks like. Destroyer rank or some bullshit like that. Um... He says, very good, sir. I am finding that book most helpful. Uh, ah, I would kind of snagger because I'm not... Ah, it's the humour thing again. Keep, keep it up. Keep it up. I shall, sir. I shall. <laughs> I think I just know uh, it. So, uh, do you know where the rest of the crew is at the moment? Indeed, would you like it displayed? Um. Yeah. 
and it brings up like just like a hollow display of the ship um, and then like highlights wherever he is and his best approximation of whoever he is based on who has been called what by who in each conversation um, are the designations correct and I guess for the most part they are for the most part <laughs> Uh, yes. They look fine. So, Alice is in the bridge. Um, Sanaida is somewhere near the bridge, just wandering. Um, about right, sounds about right. Again, like, I don't even know where, right? But like somewhere near the bridge, something that would be important to the bridge. Um, and then, possibly some kind of like backup, you know, control room or some shit like that. Just, again, just literally exploring other parts of the, uh, you know, the ship. And then I guess the rest of them are in the kitchen, right? Like the the cantina section, which is like the the crew eating place, you know. I would look at that section. I was just like, oh, I'm hungry. Isabel is obviously in the shuttle bay. I am. I think. Am I missing somebody? I think that's everybody, right? Yeah. I would once uh, Isabel been in the, the shuttle bay. What we'll state it's in? Um, uh, let's go get some food. <laughs> Keep in mind, you know Isabel is good with engines, because she did help fix. I say Ooh. fix loosely. Uh, I mean, yeah, she definitely done something with the engine. Mm. But the eleventh hour had a very special engine. After <laughs> her and Nix Five had a good go at it. Um, I actually just love that their 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 relationship has never really changed, even though they both have very much changed, right? You could very much say they're not the same people they were, yet they seem to be. I would love to know how she got crazy crystal engine, but no, mm. it's still, I still. I won't need to bring that up. Again, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> well, I mean, captain to captain, you could have a conversation with her. Um, I bet, I bet you'll just get like a, it's just a story for another time. <laughs> it's the NPC dialogue <laughs> option where I haven't written it yet. <laughs> <laughs> So, did we just well, see yeah. you heading to the kitchen then, I guess? Yeah, uh, I would kind of roughly gauge where I am and try and make my own way there. I think as you've been staring at the, the hologram for like too long, it's like, I could light the way if you wish, Captain. Ah, I've got to get used to my own shit. Very good, Captain. <laughs> I will perhaps <laughs> join Alice on the bridge. Very good. Okay, no, it's, then flickers out. I would start wandering mostly trying to get the survival rules. <laughs> why not? Actually, right, let's why don't we just roll dice this session? Do you want to give me a survival roll? <laughs> Do I find the kitchen? Uh clicking survival. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> That's kind of exactly what I wanted to have, to be honest. Right, so Zora wakes up in Triaxis in a week's time. <laughs> Nobody knows why. Um, it slowly comes back to him. Um, but in a kitchen, at least. Yeah, in a kitchen, but just you know, on a boat in the ocean on Triaxis. Be like, wait, what? A bunch of passed out, sexy dragon people, clearly on a pleasure boat. Um, but yeah, anyway, back in the actual game. Uh, I think you go wandering a bit, and instead of going left, you go right, and uh, you see Sanida just leaving one room and like. You know, scanning herself into another room, as it were, like pushing the buttons on the wall, and just walking into another room. That's still you, by the way, Nico. My God, I don't even know how my my mute, mute, my mute switch flicked over there. Um, I guess I'll just get in a chat the door behind her. You know, it's just not startle her because. Yes. And it seems to be like a like a storage room of sorts. Oh. Oh. I've never seen this before. And then she turns around and goes, Storage rooms? She kind of uh, just laughs kind of dismissively to herself. I would kind of snigger. Just, just this particular one. I see. I was perhaps hoping for something slightly more suitable for the journey ahead, yet I feel I may have to utilise the wardrobe facilities of the Azure Flare 
as opposed to this vessel. Uh, unfortunately, I'd kind of like pinch my clothes. A little bit bulkier than the average sort. Yes, it seems like Vesk never considered a creature of my size to be of any tactical use to them. I don't think the Vesk considered any other creature, period. She kind of just like sighs and she says, yes, so it seems. Um, and she's like looking at all the kind of like, you know, standard deal like suits of armour that are like <laughs> held up being like, yeah, this isn't going to fit. Um, and she kind of like turns to you and she says, are we looking for something in particular, Azora? Uh, I was looking for the kitchen. Um, she you, she has it, like she has a look when you say that to her, by the way, as if I'm not your fucking kitchen. Um, <laughs> until you say like shamelessly I'm a bit lost and she goes yes I would think you are I am um, would you like me to take you to the kitchen oh what are you asking me don't know <laughs> she laughs at that like a proper like real hearty laugh Um. And she like she steadies herself on like one of the like the central columns holding up a bunch of like suits of armor or whatever. And she's like you know, that was actually funny. Yeah. I gave a, I gave a, I should probably give that book a a bit as well. <laughs> and then she says I can't guarantee whatever is on the menu will be enjoyable. But it oh, will I probably be. It. Because then, by all means, follow me. <laughs> I will follow. And then, um, yeah, she like just kind of walks so far until there's a crossroads in the corridors, and she just stands very still for a second, and then just chooses a direction, and off she goes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're going to get lost together. Let's go. <laughs> right, no, like you, you just get to the canteen fairly quickly. Oh, this. oh, yeah. Sense of track. And she, when you say it to her, she's like, "No, just a good sense of smell." Mm. And then she kind of like, she just walks into the, uh, the cantina. What is the scene we walk into? Because you'd have had plenty of time to have. Uh, well, my sniper rifle was de definitely on one of the tables, like in parts, polishing it as I shove food into my face. I think then. As um, you're doing that, like CC is definitely going to be on that table with the gun. Okay, <laughs> that seems safe. And then, um, as you you're like touching parts of it, he points to other parts of it, and then points to the one you're holding. Yeah, I, I, I know, I know. He, he kind of like makes motions with two of his hands, like clicking together. Hmm. Possibly rude in some cultures, to be fair. It's just maintenance. Look, uh, the thing go it goes together easy. Look, you just just you know, just like clap a couple of bits together. See? And then he starts handing you more parts excitedly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's no like it's no big deal. It's just <laughs> sort of reassembly. <laughs> <laughs> one hand and going, I you see this close and blue. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Nodding to him to show mm. that you know, just check that he's understood. <laughs> he's most definitely still as soon as you put a part in its place, handing you the next part. Um, mm. and, like until it's fully assembled again, um, he's gonna make sure you try and assemble it, whether or not you got it finished, polished or not. <laughs> I just don't think you like the idea that you dismantled it. Just going along. <laughs> Yeah, what about um, Weird and uh, Zig? Weird is making two smoothies at once with separate blenders. Nice. It's got the great formed Swedish chef action going on. Cool. Give me a roll. Yes. What sort of roll? I want to say it's life sciences unless you've got a better idea. A morning roll. <laughs> Well, given this is Starfinder, and I'm drawing on different cuisines, this is definitely culture. Now, I'm pretty sure it's life sciences, or... Not, not mysticism. I mean, do you know what? Why not? Like, do you want to just give me mysticism? Fuck yeah. it. 
That's yeah. bad. Yeah, it's pro it's pretty bad. It's not as bad as a captain survival rule right enough, but like it's no. it's pretty bad. They're giving that well, plus twelve on mysticism. I think um pretty, pretty bad. realistically what that translates is that you're willing to put ingredients you might you might not recognise into these blenders. And uh I'm trusting that the spiritual way will go into the correct ingredients. Yeah, you're feeling the recipe, not knowing the recipe. You're feeling... I read about it in some magazine. Yeah. Oh dear. But you were deceived. <laughs> Far in secret, a recipe was forged. <laughs> <laughs> One to bake them all. Anyway. So, yeah, you, um. I think you mix two of them up, right? So you've, you've mixed two smoothies, right? And I think one of them just keeps bubbling, even though nothing you put in it should bubble. And the, the other one just smells awful. But that seems normal for a bunch of smoothies. It might be good for you. Captain, I made you a drink. Uh, good. I'll grab it and just slop it in, because... Which one did you give him? I passed him the bubbling one. The bubbling one. Okay. Do you want to give me a fort save? <laughs> uh... I think we know how... Uh, Sanida found her way here based on the smoothies though, don't we? <laughs> yeah, that's pretty bad, buddy. Um, I think you drink this and it's... Yeah, it's definitely not good. I don't really know what it does other than you immediately have stomach cramps. Uh, I get stomach cramps and I... <laughs> I think um, CC runs right to the end of the table I am to look at the captain. Um and what, what just happened, like just like pushing past whatever Lyco was doing. So if there was a plate with food on it, it's possibly been like stepped on or pushed to the side because of his scampering. And uh, he just looks up at you, Captain, and looks down at what you, like you've, you kind of spewed and then he kind of looks back up at you and then just starts like going ah, da, 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 and pointing at both of it. <laughs> uh, the hell did you put on this? Like, <laughs> Snyder just stands to the side and puts like her hand up to like her nose and she says, The smell is quite repugnant. Would you like some? And she kind of like just raises eyebrows and says, No, thank you. I think I shall forgo that. Uh, and I offer, I offer the glass to Craig. He just makes grabby hands from the end of the table. Yeah. He gets the smelly, smelly glass. So you give him to the you give Craig the other smoothie, the smelling awful one. Yeah, then I'll go back and make another one. Cool. Using different ingredients. He um, he holds it, he smells it, and goes, Bwah! and then he uh, holds it up to Zora. No. <laughs> 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 and he, like his two little hands that were the top two hands holding it out to you very eagerly as he's like almost falling off the end of the table, and then he, like one of his other hands underneath him just gives you a thumbs up. Trying to encourage you. Uh, I'll grab it, I'll like walk over to the sink, I'll stand to the side and I'll sort of like just make the drinking gesture, but I'm pulling it down at the sink. <laughs> <laughs> I think um, he just sits on the end of the table and just folds his arms. <laughs> uh, delicious. <laughs> just slowly shakes his head. <laughs> I really uh, disappointed because I wanted to shoot it. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think uh, Thanaida carefully steps over the mess on the floor and um, it goes to, to Weird and she says, Do you know what you are doing? Yes. <laughs> General Bluff? <laughs> no, 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 it's definitely persuasive. This is psychic cooking. It's <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> getting these crazy shaman med medicine. <laughs> Why don't you give me a survivor roll this time, right? You know, <laughs> give me a survivor roll. Yeah, I feel like I was trying to identify things that you're safe to eat, right? I slightly bet my bluff. And pretty bad. Um, yeah, I, but it's not with a minus one modifier. The right, I'm gonna see how well the queen does. Right. Well. Wow. So 
as you're picking things out and sitting them down with all your hands, she's moving them into two different piles just behind you without necessarily okay. you like noticing as you're like pulling things out of like the kind of storage units. Um, so that when you're finished and you turn around, you can see that she's made two clear distinct piles and she goes, this pile is for vacating the body of what would once fulfill it. And this pile is for your smoothie. This psychic like cuisine. You see, I had the intention of making a smoothie, and thus the cycle provided. <coughs> if by the cycle you mean me, then sure. We're all part of the cycle. Then you're welcome. She picks up like a piece of fruit that's in like the, the stuff and just like puts like a, like a grape, a space grape, if you will, and uh, just eats it. Then everything goes in the blender. And then, uh, what's like literally everything? Everything. Okay. Yeah. I mean, all of the good stuff, not the bad stuff. Okay, cool. Everything in the good stuff. But... Cool. And then, as like you're doing that, she says, "Now there's enough in there for at least three of us." And she winks at you, um, and she goes and like sits down. Just across from Lyco, I guess. I had shrimp bar, but added texture. Mm -hmm. To blend it in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, I think CC kind of climbs up onto the countertop where you are, um, and then just looks at the blender as it's like you know, on and making noises, and he's just staring at it. I shuffle the other blender towards him. He kind of looks up at you and gives you a big thumbs up. You can have this one. There's your fruit over there. And he kind of looks at the pile and he gives you like another second thumbs up along with the first one. Um, and then he scampers over to it and then he starts throwing all the fruit into the blender. Or at least all the other substances that seem to be yes. dangerous. Um, yeah, and he starts pour. I say I pour my smoothie out for me, the queen, and Zed. Okay, cool. And sit down and watch. Watch Craig work. Yep, and he. Um, He's putting things in, but he's not turned it on yet. It just seems to keep like jamming things into it. Um, and then one of the little arms from his backpack comes out and hands him some tools. And then he starts like unscrewing parts of the uh, the blender. <laughs> Good old <okay. laughs> Yeah. Uh, anything you want to do in here, by the way, beyond get fed? Um, I'll clean up some of the, the mess that Craig made as he scampered away. Okay, cool. Not the mess the cat's made by spewing on the floor, though, no. Oh, no. The cat can deal with that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think Zig's just, eat, like, eating. He's... That's, that's about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. And I think, um, Saira takes the drink and obviously slowly drinks, you know, from it. And she goes, You know, this isn't actually that bad, considering. You're welcome. And, and she like, oh, and she just clink she just clinks um the kind of big plasticky container thing off mm -hmm. like both you and uh, Zig's you know smoothies as if toasting and I think um I think CC notices this um and then seems to be working faster. I'll get this done before they stop me. <laughs> <laughs> While they're busy. <laughs> yeah. Um, right. So yeah, you can get fed. You can have your, you know, whatever your intake of food requirements and whatnot are covered um, by the the cantina. Um, yeah. I think at some point, um, Isabel wanders in to the room, maybe like half an hour later or something. Um, uh, she looks at the group and she's like, So, Shuttle seems fine. I don't, I don't know what the. Uh, she kind of motions to like CC very gently. Not really sure what that other situation is, though. But the shuttles seem fine. He's making a trick. Oh no. And she motions like the captain. The other situation. Uh, pay our parts? Ah, I'll be fine. Z uh, like, immediately, 
um, when Zora says that, like CC looks up from what he's doing, and he's like, ah, da, da, da. at you, Zora. Yes, 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 they're still there. Okay, looks at you, like suspiciously, then looks at Isabel suspiciously, <laughs> and then gives you a thumbs up. Thumbs up, pack. <laughs> And he goes back to working on his blender. Oh, uh, just kind of was was pretty weird. Wait, why look and see what he's doing? It's the worst could happen. <laughs> I would think back to like what, the two seconds ago when you ate that oh. that smoothie that you threw up with. <laughs> uh, I'll just I'll just stick at that one. I just play. Mm. <laughs> uh, this is too stressful. <laughs> it's stressful for you, is it? Because I mean, I'm. How many people on this ship right now? <laughs> I'll go to Craig and offer to give him a hand. Um, I don't think he notices straight away. I will hear what he's doing. Can you roll engineering? Now that's something I can do. Nice. 35. Yeah, he's um He's gave the the blender six legs. Yeah. And it seems to have like two tiny manipulators at one facing of it. And then I think he just like sits on his backside with his legs kind of slid open with the kind of blender in between everything. And he looks up at you and then looks at it and points at it and then looks at you and gives you a thumbs up. The issue is about he's made a blender drone. Yes, here. I was yeah. referring to the shuttle bay situation she waves her hand vaguely in there like she's trying not to like necessarily activate him um, CC I shall walk out and go to the shuttle bay <laughs> and um CC kind of like looks a bit disappointed that you're you've started walking off um and then just like starts screaming at the the blender and then the blender gets up and like follows you <laughs> Zig follows the blender. Okay. Make sure he does not touch my parts, minion. <laughs> <laughs> and like, obviously, as this thing like walks, all the stuff that was like jammed in the top of it has just like slowly fell out and rolled all over the like you know the cantina. Because he never put the lid on, obviously, because it's CC. Obviously. Um. So yeah, like you're followed by this horrible little metallic-y scorpion type blender. I guess. Excellent. And um This won't go better. Not at all. And uh Yeah. What about everybody else in the cantina? Anything else of a note? Mm, not that I can think of. I'd probably just be like blending myself an actual drink. Mm -hmm. Like a good old vest recipe of some good sort. Just probably just like Yeah, open one blend. sachet, pour it into a thing, <laughs> fill full of what <laughs> yeah. Blend until yeah. thick. Yep. I'm probably just feeding myself in a, a fairly normal manner. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhat creatively. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like maybe one too many bars of uh, sustenance. He know. tends to not eat frequently, so when he does, he kind of pigs out a bit. <laughs> oh, ravenous. Mm. Um, quite, quite verily. I think um, when you're up blending, so. uh, uh, next to the random pile of spare parts in front of uh, CC, he just looks up at you, Captain, and points at the blender and points at him. And gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Is this mine as well? <laughs> <laughs> no, this one stays. We need this to eat. <laughs> okay, until it's his head. And just looks at you. Or was it just the parts he pointed at? Or was the actual blender? No, it was the whole blender, obviously. Oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm no thumbs up in that shit. <laughs> thumbs down. <laughs> and then he kind of, he, like he, he also then gives like a thumbs down with his thumb, and then he kind of just folds his arms, and they get a bit of a mood. 
Vistiinkö se, että itä? Tja. Ehti ostaa Zora? No, no, I would just go back to Blend and what was that? Yeah. And I, I, I would, I would like hand him like a, a small one as well. A baby one. Beautiful. So cute. And then... Um, he, he takes it, and at first when you, you hand it to him, he then holds it back up to you. Uh, I'll clink my glass off it. Like, cheers. <laughs> he very quickly pulls his glass back and looks at the glass, like where it clinked, and then looks up at you, and then just starts berating you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like preciously hugs the glass and then quickly gobbles it all down. <laughs> It's like, thank you, <laughs> minion. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, I think Thanida, during all of this nonsense, um, just says to Lykel, what are you hoping to achieve while on Versus? Um, primarily, I want to, uh, Kind of check base with uh, with the contact and the stewards. Update them on the uh, situation with Vesk in the system, and potentially the captain can contact his um whatever his point of contact is. I would I would say, and say it. Well, unfortunately, uh, uh, the old commanders uh, kind of went dark, so. Unfortunately, that avenue's a write-off. Oh? That's what the private message was. I see. Then... Maybe it won't be necessary for us to... Okay. <laughs> you seem maybe disconcerted, Lyco. Well, I... Uh... I'm not certain that I want to make the uh, connection over a, a long-range calm, but, but it might be possible that we can set something up, and then it won't be necessary to visit Verses, but... I think um, CC stands up and just points at himself. You're the, exactly the guy I had in mind, CC. Gives you a thumbs up. And then he points to the thumbs blender. Up. Yeah, that's impressive. He looks up at the captain and gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> oh, give him a thumbs up back. Well, he, t- he takes the blender. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> Put the blender down. We need that. He shakes his head. Oh sh- no! Oh, <laughs> nod my head. <laughs> he points at Lyco and starts berating you, eh, uh, captain? <laughs> As far as he's concerned, yeah. you both said it was okay. No! <laughs> no! It's not okay! Yeah. I'm the captain! I say no! <laughs> Aren't we all captains? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> no, don't rob with that, you shut up. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think he may have, um, may, may, we might have been at cross purposes there. It, it was cool when you made one of them, but making another means we don't really have a normal blender. Which is less good. I think he, he looks at the blender when you say that, and then points at it, and then looks at you, Lyco, and says, ah, da, 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 and points back at the blender. blender. But, uh, you know, other people use the blender. So long as people can use the blender, I guess it's fine. Right? He looks up at the captain really quickly. With the smantling of the blender, okay? Kind of screws up his face a bit. No blender drones. No, no. Oh god, there's too many, too many things to cover. No, no, none of. Don't, don't break the blender. <laughs> he kind of just um, looks at the blender in his hands, and then kind of clutches it tighter. Yes, keep it safe. He nods very solemnly. Yes. And then leaves the oh. room with it. Oh my god. I'll never see that <laughs> again, please. <laughs> it, it probably still works. Yeah, it'll be fine. <laughs> <laughs> but, um. 
Captain, I don't want to needlessly split up the team and stretch our resources, so if, if visiting Versys is no longer in the cards for you, then I don't see why we should do it purely count of my contact. We still need to retrieve Ivan. It's fine. It's fine. Is there Don't any worry. particular reason she's uh? Di wait, do I know? Wait, usually, usually the bigger, more impressive ones are women, so I'd probably assume it's women anyway. Um, does she know? No, sorry. Did she did did she give any reason why she's uh gone dark, as you put it? Ah, uh, just that she had matters to attend to, probably to do with Debogesh. When was this message left? Uh, I didn't check. <laughs> Yeah, it was like three days after you'd been like, you know, away, as it were. So, Where yous were actually in that particular time period, I have no idea. But um, I mean, you factor in the jumping we did, and it's kind of hard to keep up. But yeah, okay, so it's a few days ago, and she's not got back in touch, presumably. Yous were probably on Castrovel by that point, right? You can assume it syncs up with when you've been on Castrovel. I mean, this might have been in reaction to things changing with the Mogesh and him deciding to move to Triaxis. She might have had to go quiet on account of maybe she was asked to accompany him. It's a safe assumption. Yeah, like, so politically and militarily, right, like, ditching the command for the Vesk, like, Demogesh could ask the Obsidian Star to do something underhand for him if he had to. Okay. But they're not directly under him, like, the Obsidian Star are, like, directly under the Viscarium Emperor, mm. right? Even if Demogesh thinks of himself as that in this, say, uh, solar system. Um... He basically is that in the solar system, which is the only reason why he could ask Matva to do something here. But she technically doesn't answer to him. She is of the same level as him, if that makes sense. Okay. <coughs> yeah, um, bit of Vesk <laughs> ranking. Perhaps she's decided to go along just for information reasons. Um, I'm not entirely sure. You, you know, sorry, so Zora, you know from your meeting with her that she definitely was doing a lot based on like her timeline she brought up. I am um, <laughs> like you know she's got a lot of shit that she's doing, hence why she was willing to delegate a lot of it to you. I am um, right, okay. and imagine how many yous are out in this particular solar system for her, right? Okay. So I guess I would just say and then um there's a lot of matters that, as far as I know, she would have to deal with, hence why she even approached us in the first place, so it could be something completely different. Uh, I guess. Can't begin to... It just feels the, you know, the timing. Um, okay. What can we do in her absence? Assume she's not there, or that she's otherwise engaged and won't, you know, contact you. Um, I still feel like getting in touch with the stewards is a good idea. And, well, like I said, what's the is it why? small Ivan of Ivan. The small matter of Ivan. Yeah. And the small Ivan of Ivan. Mm -hmm. Is it wise to go in in a Vesk vessel if you're not in communication with her? If that's, if she has requested non-communication then turning up in this vessel might give us an issue potentially. I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure how that would work. Um, that is right. This vessel won't directly tie to the Obsidian Star though. That's why it's kind of designed that way. Like, right, so it's, The Obsidian Star basically have cool vessels that can change their number plate, right? Like, for lack of a more elegant way of putting that. They're designed in a way that you could have an Obsidian Star Vessel in a fleet of vessels and not necessarily have it stand out. They're very much the secret police of the Vesk 
in that regard. As far as the rest of his vest should be concerned, this is just another transport ship bringing supplies. Okay. So we could take this one in without issue. All right, that's not that's not bad. Um, because that was my my main concern. If she was wanting, you know, a communication, then turning up in her ship, yeah. But if if she's got it, um. Yeah, her ship was huge by comparison. As the cutscene showed us, she's in a massive vest, like you know, warship. Um, yeah, but just mean like, as in it was yeah. one of them. Yeah, it's definitely not identifiable as like you know, oh, this is under the control of Medfa or whatever. Like, yeah, it's very much a case of do Obsidian Star have a budget and what they do with it? Meh. So this won't <laughs> raise any flags. And in that case, no reason not to use it. So. We contact Commander Commander Babak, right? Hmm. I would not. He wanted information on the activities of Demogish, and we can give him that. Those are not. Question is, what he asks next? Because there will be something he'll ask next. Because what information we have, it's pretty broad, right? You know. How um, much do you feel that you can trust them? Or more like how much do you feel that you can trust the men above them? Stewards exist to keep the pact in order and ensure that it doesn't collapse by enforcing it. And they have discretion. They're not... They're not going to pursue everything with... Uh, equal zeal because they know certain things have to be let slide for the sake of the pact and the, the Vesk have a sort of um, unusual position in this system having been recent invaders so what the steward you know hierarchy want to do about this uh, I can only guess, but I uh, assume that they want to reduce the uh, influence of the Vesk in the system where possible and, and solidify their own. Because oh. he was concerned with the Vesk having offered, and of course him being a little position to refuse, uh, support. They don't want the Vesk doing their job. For, for obvious reasons. I think you can imagine. But not. Back, back to words, don't want the Viscarium uh, managing their business. Um, what exactly he wants beyond that? What his tire ups want? I can only guess, as I say. It'll, there'll be. A lot of um, uncertainty, right? They're, they're, they're not any more sure of how this is all going to unfold than we are, probably, so... My guess is part of it is they're going to be looking for someone to blame when, this, when it all falls through. Um, fortunately, I don't think we're big enough to be those someones. Um, but they'll want to, you know... They want to show years to come that they did something and that someone was held accountable. Whether that be you know, uh, Tectalanus and uh, Mogesh or Hamani or what, what have you I don't think it matters all that much but I'm not saying they won't want a scapegoat. They want someone that they can show is, look, this person threatened the stability of the pact. You also I wonder the longevity that is between somebody like Tectalanus and uh, Demogesh, right? Because, yeah. yeah, that's not exactly a partnership destined to last. No. What the hell is a partnership destined for a using? Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> absolutely. Um, but yeah, that's, the gist of it, I think, is that, that Lyco is probably not exactly the worst in the know about what the higher-ups in the steward hierarchy would want, right? He's He was a 
fairly low level guy um, and I think anything he says will be probably stitching things together from what he sort of remembers overhearing from officers and things um, in fact you know what this might be an interesting time for a cultural role <laughs> yeah go for it why not I, I think just for the, the culture specifically relating to the political climate within the stewards mm-hmm, mm-hmm. yeah one sec let me just get the character sheet do, 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 do. how cha culture 35 which is pretty bad for me so realistically there is you know a commander in charge of usually a facility of some kind um, so hence why Babak was in charge of like Absalom but yeah. ultimately his higher ups, as it were, um, would be probably a, a committee of like officers that were promoted up. So, like, you know the way you get um, lawyers that become judges, yeah, like the same idea where it'd be like a group of judges, or quote, not to go too judge dread on this, but like, <laughs> yeah, a bunch of um, and let's just call them judges for lack of a better term now. Um, but yeah, stewards would eventually become judges and they would form, you know the council that would dictate what is and isn't good policy for every day and it's made up ideally of multicultural you know intake from the uh, pact world works a lot with um ambassadorial cores to try and make sure that the again the needs of the different people are being attended and obviously if there's massive cultural shifts within a government on a planet never mind an entire planet but obviously the subsections are going within planets because obviously like Castro Val alone is home to different species, right? So, yeah, it's very much a case of uh, built up on <laughs> we're doing the best we can based on the fact that we need to appease too many people, so we just police the really bad stuff that we come across. You know, or things that make them money by, you know, kind of like drug busts and such. Obviously the lack of them. Um, Absalom's pretty bad because it was a nice centralised location to focus most of the um, policing through, right? Most of the um, business of the the galaxy, as it were, the, the, the solar system would be forced to happen on Absalom. It was like a choke point in a sense. Yeah, but Versys was definitely the headquarters and where like the stewards are based regardless. It's just that's where they've also fell back to considering Absalom was their, you know, forward operating base, as it were. Um, and as you say, choke point from a political point of view. Yeah, because obviously when you have a marketplace that focuses economic, mm-hmm. activity, economic activity in a certain area and it sort of somewhat limits the areas you have to police as a result. Um, but yeah, there was intake to the stewards from everywhere as well, right? Like, the only place it didn't really partake in that was obviously Eox, but it doesn't mean you say that people that... Um, I don't know what they would do because it's never happened according to my timeline to make things slightly simpler but no undead has ever asked to be part of the stewards but there's nothing to say they couldn't be based on the Pact Worlds agreement if that makes sense so Would it be sort of somewhat reasonable for Lyco to assume then because a lot of people are thinking like you know uh, it was the Oxians that what did Absalom um and the lack of maybe any explicit, there might be ones that are sort of more in favour of them, but the lack of an actual Eoxian presence directly on this sort of like council, would it, would it perhaps be too reasonable to think that a lot of the stewards are perhaps looking at it, at at least the higher ups are, as like, you know, do we shift the blame to Eox here? Is this a, so is potentially a fake quote? I think you've, you've got enough understanding of how most of those kind of cogs work to kind of put together that Eox is empty. Yeah. Who are they blaming currently? Well, the, the and what I mean by that is like the Bone Sages who had a seat on said judges, right? Yeah. Never attended though, right? Yeah. They just didn't take part in that because they were like, meh, don't care. Like, we will please our own people on here. Um, obviously the corpse fleet, totally different scenario, right? Um, kind of, you know, disowned by Yox in a way. <laughs> Politically and officially disowned 
shall we yeah. say. And um, yeah, given that, the bone sages were like, what was it, like 150 or some shit like that? Um, yeah, and then, I think it was like 147 or something akin to that. Which was a big problem, right, considering how powerful one is, but like, then it went down to eight, which now seems to go down to seven. Yeah. Which now seems to be down to six, given Ramaseth is happy to have kind of written herself off mm-hmm. and happy for other people to write her off. Um, and considering one of those six is assumedly the archivist. Te- yeah. <laughs> Tectalanus being another one. Yeah. Right? We're down to four unaccounted ones that could be part of the corpse fleet if they're still about. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, there you have it. Um, the corpse fleet, though, aren't about. So, the only thing they've seen was Sindael, I guess. Remember, I told you that there were a lot of rumours about Sindael being the the Bone Sage like, charged with the problems, especially since he put himself forward as the ambassador on the... Uh, the station for the you know the Oxians it kind of seems like that could have been the again conspiracy that you were kind of glancing over Eox could have generated all of this as a massive ploy to disrupt things while they do whatever they're planning to do and nobody's looking at Eox right is it empty question mark seems to be but nobody's, yeah. nobody's went there specifically that you're user aware of to be like, let's go send the stewards to investigate Yorks to make sure it's empty. It's it's just they don't have time to do that, right? They're too busy trying to like re- relocate um, all the refugees across space, um, and also try and maintain some form of diplomatic relations with the Adari, you know, the Kasathan ship. To be like, can you help out in any way, please? Because we're still gonna have a bunch of like you know places that need help. Um, I mean, there might still be ships that jumped away from Absalom that are still, like, abandoned, right? Yeah. Running on, you know, s- basic support and whatnot, and the stewards obviously lost a bunch in the attack on Absalom, so... Like, I don't know, like, is there anything else you would like to know specifically um, from your role about... Um, it was, I was, it was just mainly concerned with, like, if there was a specific... Chain of command? Well, no, no a, a sort of... Specific way that the the uh, the stewards were looking at the situation. Um, uh, they probably haven't had time, realistically, to do much given that Absalom's. You know, yeah, the, we're still in the midst of the mad scramble like, after the. You the could major imagine tragedy. there is probably like research ships though, right? Like search and rescue, research, etc., and like investigation type ships. They're trying to do forensics or whatever they can. Um, to work out what happened, but again, as for what's been found yet, you wouldn't have any way of knowing. Yeah. But, like, it would be reasonable to assume they're deciding something to investigate what's happened while also doubling as a search and rescue, right? We're absolutely so I, I think, essentially, at this point, Lyco would really be grasping at straws to try and you know, mm-hmm. think of what, what, what they might think. He, he's obviously not been exactly in active contact. Um, so, yeah, the sort of thing I was saying to the the captain's probably about length and breadth of what he would feel able to mm-hmm. say. Like, anything else would be pure conjecture. Um, so I think I'll sort of leave it at that. But that is maybe something worth thinking about, like, how is Babak going to react to me rocking up in this armour? <laughs> mm. uh, but yeah, so... You do have a pretty good rapport with Babak, though. Yes. And I will be sort of coming up and saying, like, the only concern is, like, maybe he knows all this in advance because he's actually on planet and maybe the vests were quite open about, you know, we're leaving to head to Eox to investigate whatever. Mm. Not Eox, sorry, Traxus. Traxus. To investigate. You know, maybe they left out the part about working with Tectalanus because that might raise some suspicions, but maybe they were, they were quite open about. But I think at the very least something that we're going to be able to inform them might be interesting or new. Um, and we certainly do have again he may already have this but we certainly do have some relevant information about the Mogesh mm-hmm. um, well, so I would say that yeah um, I'd say they're, they're still worth they're still worth one. like I think Lyco would definitely see worth going to yeah. buy back still <clears throat> yeah I think in and out character it would probably seem worthwhile to me um, I guess Zora would just say then well 
if you can trust in the man doing the right thing, then I guess be as forthright as possible. At the stage where he told the help we can get and holding back information isn't going to help. Fair. Um. I would agree. It seems like secret keeping has only held you back this far, says Delida, obviously. It, um. It would have been an advantage just to be able to introduce you to Babak. He is, um. One of the most important commanders within the stewards, currently stationed on their main planet of operations, and he previously was stationed in Absalom Station, the most vibrant and economically active part of the Pact World. So she, you can. She puts her hand on the back of your hand, it's like you know, at your your glass or whatever, and she she just kind of smiles and then like drinks from her own smoothie, and she says. We won't be parted for long, Lykel. You don't need to worry. You could always introduce me to him again. Very well. In that case, uh, if you have no objections, then I think that the original plan is, is solid, then you can provide transport to the sun and we can take the best vessel and... At a later date, perhaps, we can introduce you to some names in the stewards. Are we to reconvene then on Versus, or is it elsewhere you wish to meet back up? Perhaps back here would be a good option. The sun might become, well, no pun intended, too hot. <laughs> oh. And Versus also. Captain, really? Um. <laughs> 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 and I'm, yeah, I, I, right. I think Sanaida just says, I'm not overly keen on Akaton, as you can imagine. Understandable. Unfortunately, it's that sort of quality that makes it the best place for us to meet up. <laughs> so it would seem... Provided we keep you away from the radiation. Would, <laughs> would not Castravel suit our purposes more? Ah, uh, she, she's, she's got a point. She's got a base of operations there already, but we need, we need to go back and see junk rats and stuff. So, fuck yeah, what? Fuck yeah, what? We need to use cash about, but um, and we did, we did say that we would introduce you to some of the important players, and it would be difficult to do that from Castroval. I would nod. But, but there's probably more connections you can make in Castroville, provided you're not, um, you know, spending all your time in your ruined fort. <laughs> she laughs, uh, kind of like, very like half-heartedly at that. And then she's kind of like looking at her glass and she says, No, I had rather planned on making use of my acquired information regarding the network of... Uh, Financiers. Gold spinners, as it were, upon Castravel. She's giving you like a look. It implies she's aware she got this information in a very shitty way. <laughs> I I, I, um, oh, you mean the. 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 I'll get, I'll make like a sort of like brain sucking motion. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, like sucking through a straw or something. I've got no idea. Like, <laughs> we we all have our methods of uh, gaining information. Uh, yes, I think this is a lot, a lot more physical, but tends to be a bit more or less effective. I am to we'll believe. To so she like she like you say that, and she goes. She kind of waves a hand to try and interrupt. She goes. I am to believe that a. Uh, Someone paid for my medical expenses, and she like waves her hand like vaguely as if she's trying to understand that that's a thing. Um, yeah, I think it was Zig. Yeah, it was probably Zig. I see. There is some way. You have his details. I can repay this. I would. I would chuck on my 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 cred chip. You really use <laughs> details on it. We have, we have de has details on mm. it. <laughs> right, okay. Gem. 
catches it and then she says thank you for this I feel it is a debt I should definitely repay directly um, it is a perhaps the reason I am able to accompany you still was the attention I was given I'm sure he would say don't mention it but he's a good kid indeed it does worry the mind that he has ended up with us and she kind of smiles and smirks at that statement as she looks at both of you I'm wondering to myself I don't know what the hell she means <laughs> <laughs> perfectly good medkit why would you want rid of him yeah exactly <laughs> right so I think we fade out on you guys right and then we fade over to the infinite corridor that apparently uh, weird and uh, this you know Blender and Zig went down. Uh, it goes on forever. Along with uh, Isabel, and he's getting to the shuttle bay. Uh, I think weird you were leading the way. So, yeah. What is it you're? Uh, what do you do when you get there? Uh, I look around for whatever is supposed to be concerned. Uh, anything immediately concerning? There seems to be what would be called a techno junk igloo. In the middle of the room. A jiggly. Yes. <laughs> a a tijiglu. A, a tijiglu. Yes. I will approach that. There we go. A tijiglu. Um, yeah. I um, Does it look dangerous? Is it on fire? No, but as you approach, like welding noises happen, and like the kind of sparks from welding just start to like flare up. It looks kind of like, you know, a Roman candle. I continue approaching. Yeah, and then like it just changes colour. Does it look like it's designed for anything in particular? <laughs> no. Like, no. It, it looks like um, CC could crawl into it, and that's about it. The, um, oh. Something bumps your, like, your foot, and you look down, and it's the weird blender scorpion. Do you... Have natural language processing. It kind of looks up at you and it like snips both its mandibles, or it's not its mandibles, its little um, manipulators, um, and then like whirs the blades inside the blender once. <laughs> slap, slap. <Woo>. Yeah. <laughs> All right, um, and head towards the igloo and start poking bits of it. And I think um, as you do, like maybe like some of the looser junk falls off it, and the little uh, uh, scorpion just starts like picking them up and like putting them back very slowly because it's you know it's a blender with tiny arms. Can I switch him <laughs> off? Uh, yeah. Just give yeah. me a I don't know. Give me an engineering role. Probably it's not a particularly difficult thing to do, but honestly, you can find where the button's been moved to. Twenty. Yeah, I think that's decent enough. Yeah, like yeah. maybe maybe you go to switch it off, and like where you hit is not it. It gives you like a static shock or something, and then you can see that it's been moved to like the side. So yeah. Helpful. I turn that off. Yeah, and the little thing just like collapses where it is. Blue. Yeah. And then turn around and starts taking pieces out of the tech kid and laying them out to try and make some sense of what the hell he's done. Mm. And where these bears have come from. Zig, <laughs> anything else you're, um, do you want to do in the scene? Well, that's happening because you, uh, you'd followed the little scorpion into the room. So. Yeah, no, I think as like the um, scorpion was it weird, I think Zig would just kind of look at the pile, look at weird, and just take a deep breath and walk into the the shuttle. Yeah, and I think um, you see SK. Because I'm like, yeah, Weird's got this, this is not. <laughs> yeah, and like Isabel's in there, sorry, and uh, she's like looking around, she's like, nothing looks damaged or dismantled or broken beyond what I remember. Is there anything you notice out of place? Uh, uh, do I notice anything out of place? I think you maybe percept. You don't mean to perceive? Why not? There we go. Uh, no, nothing looks out of place at all. Again, just the, the egg crate tipped over is the only thing. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like beyond that, no, nothing seems strange. Uh, kind of looks like CC probably didn't touch 
like at least the Azure Flares shuttle. Uh huh. Yeah, that's all that matters just now. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think Zig says yeah, no, everything. Yeah, looks looks fine. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, I'm gonna make sure we've got everything we need. Do you want to do pre-flight or do you want me to do that? I got it. Good. She kind of like. And like she says, good in a kind of reassuring way. Like I'm glad you have said that. Like it's giving her a bit more confidence about the mission that you're confident about that. Um, uh-huh. So she's like, right, I'll be back in a uh, ten minutes. And she just like walks off, and she looks at um, weird as she walks out of the shuttle. She goes, shuttle looks fine. Are you good to head off then? Am I good to head off? Captain. I believe it would be Commander. I think we're all Captain rank now, from what I have gathered from Finn. Admiral. <laughs> <laughs> and she tilts her head to the side, and she's like, you know, if that's going to get your ass on that shuttle, sure, Admiral. And then she, <laughs> and then she um, turns on her heels and <laughs> walks all the way back up the, out of the way of the, sh- like the shuttle be. Um... Come on, come on, Rosie. We have to go. <laughs> and then, boop, 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 boop. so we follow we follow <laughs> Isabel for a bit to the point where she walks up the corridor and then just stops on the spot as CC is like shuffling with this blender in his arms, just down the far way of a corridor, and like trying to use it to stand on it to like push the button to get into one of the doors. Doors wish open. He jumps back down and then drags the blender inside, and the doors close. And then she just she's just been watching the whole thing unfold, and she's like shaking her head. Uh, um, what the hell is that creature? <laughs> and then uh, she then stands and like thinks for a second. She goes, Finn. He like blinks into existence, and she says, "Where would you send a private communication from if I had the need?" And then he says. I can direct you to our main bridge if you wish, or there is a secure communication suite. She goes, either is fine. And Finn says, excellent. And then blinks away. And then she heads off. We stick with her as she like walks into like a, you know, fairly secure looking, very basic room, like a comms panel. She like flicks the comms open and then looks at them, flicks them back off again, leans against the wall, exhales really, really loudly. And then she says, okay. Pulls out, like, now she's got that thing on her belt, the kind of weird banana-shaped kind of mech scanner. Pulls out something from her, the back of her belt. Like, clicks it open. Starts, a uh, dialing. And then, like, holds it up to her mouth. And then you hear it like crackle. And then you hear like a beep as if it's connecting to something. And then she says, Right, I'm going to be off world for quite a bit. You know what to do. And you hear like some crackling. And there's a voice that comes back through it saying, So how's it going then? And she says, Well, apparently I'm part of the crew now. So that's something. And she sighs loudly at that. She says, just you keep an eye on that egg. I'll be back soon enough. Okay. She said, go to bed, girl. And then she clicks the uh, the comm off, and then the camera lingers with the other comm device it was connected to, with the gloved hand, and then the comm device goes off, sits it on a, a countertop, and then in, you know, the camera pans out a little bit, and we see... Mr. Wesland scooping noodles into his mouth on Daza. And we end the session there. Fucking double crosser. We should kill him. We should kill him. I mean, I mean, <laughs> who's to say what's going on there, right? <laughs> who's to say what's going Spacer. on there? Um, oh dear, Commodore Zig. Um, you see what you've started now? Uh, it was the only response to that. To be fair, yeah, like I mean that's valid. If you're if you want to have that relationship with uh, Isabel, that seems fine. Um what do you just want to call this one then? Because there are about four million, million. Yeah, right. Yeah. 
I mean, I'm I'm a very big fan of uh, Tijiglu, personally. Tijiglu. <laughs> 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 um, yeah, like, there, there's too many that I feel like this is my favourite. Uh, like, Blender Scorpion seemed like a valid one. Um, you know, Joke um, as well. <laughs> False Pregnancy seems a bit provocative as a title. Um, Killer Fight. <laughs> yeah. Um, anything, anything that stands out for MD? Download the book. <laughs> Download the book. <laughs> uh, feel free to either type it in chat and or vote for it and uh, we shall move on. Let me know what you are feeling and vibing. Mm. <laughs> I don't know, I'm going for the jiggly man. Yeah. <laughs> Makes no sense. <laughs> That's just so good. <laughs> I love it. It sounds like you've met somebody called Tijiglu, doesn't it? Uh, it does actually. Tijiglu. <laughs> I like it. Well, that's it. That's that's good enough for me to juggle. It's, it's a winner. Um, doesn't need to make sense. You know this. Um, right. Okay. Cool. To juggle is sorted. Uh, goals. Let's have a look at those, shall we? Well, who completed the goal? Not nobody. Maybe not. Maybe. Yeah, I think so. Are all the goals still in progress, and you still want to pursue I with think them? So. Mm -hmm. so for me. Yeah. I'm good for me. Are you a bit unsure there, weird? No, it's still good. Okay, oh, good. I might, might switch one of mine out at the start of next session. Yeah, no worries. Well, we'll talk about the start of next session anyway, as per the standard. Yep. Uh, yeah, that's along right. with everything else that we'll, that we'll talk about at the start of next session. Yeah, right. When we start at 5 a.m., just to build us enough time up, momentum <laughs> up to start at 7 p.m. properly, yeah. Um, right, good. That was easy. Goals, perfect, done. Uh, let me just shimmy us over to... The credit screen that I keep forgetting exists sometimes, um, and yeah, here we are with the credit screen. And do you wanna take it away? I guess. Like, who 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 wants to go first? Weird. Do you wanna go first? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll have a go. <laughs> Thanks for running, Ryan. Oh, you're I'm welcome. Wonderful to... to do this again, and thank you to my comrades, the captain, the commodore, and. Like a. <laughs> I feel like I've been demoted. <laughs> Not been demoted. You've been undemoted. Undemoted. Demotkesh. <laughs> Actually, isn't, I'm going to just put this in chat, right? Demotkesh is definitely when if you've managed to assassinate him. Demotkesh. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Don't ask me why there's a cheeky tilde in there, but there we have it. The Shvichy Tilda everywhere. There we go. <laughs> Professors. Yep. Uh, the actress, of course. Of course. Uh, but yeah, uh, no, that was a fun session. Uh, I'm enjoying the relationship that is continuing to deteriorate between mm -hmm. me and Isabel. Yeah, um, right. It is a bit weird in general, that particular interaction, because they weren't in the best footing. Like, your best relationship with her is when she was dead. Oh, I miss her being dead. Honestly, <laughs> it was so easy to idolise her when she was dead. She was like um, a martyr, a mini martyr. She was. <laughs> like, can I just walk about with a corpse on the team? Right, it would just be so much better for morale. <laughs> um, it really would. <laughs> as, as crazy as that sounds, I get where he's coming from. <laughs> oh, dear. I get that shade, man. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting that. <laughs> and also, I think a lot of it is exuding the relationship that Nix5 wasn't able to voice. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you've got new ways of sharing frustration and stuff, right? Um, yes. Which yeah, is nice. Weird learning, emotional expression. Uh, actually, one of the highlights for me, I did really enjoy the chat with Alice about identity. Yeah, it was good. Um, uh, it actually, kind of reminded me a lot of. Uh, friend at uni who was doing a lot of work on how you can explore trans issues through transhumanism. Awesome. Uh, and that sort of space. Uh, not that I can claim to be mm -hmm. educated enough to dive into that space, which is why I've 
try to keep it lightish. But uh, yeah, like the I theme would, is very interesting. I think it's why I quite like Alice as an NPC to play because she yeah. doesn't know in-depth information about most of the things she engages with, right? Because yeah. she wouldn't engage with somebody else if she did know in-depth information. She'd just go do it. So, mm. like with the diner explosion, right? She clearly thought all of that out, and she just decided to do it. She never thought, let's discuss it. But yeah. I like the um, that concept of what is it, like, who am I and what makes me me is obviously a reason. Yeah. I love exploring existentialism in, in, in the first place. Um, that's why Ghost in the Shell is one of my favourite animes for that reason. Oh, yeah. Well. But, and, oh, yeah. An aspect of that is why I chose androids in the first place. Mm -hmm. Because they're a really interesting medium to work with in the way that Pathfinder presents it. The Starfinder, sorry. Yeah, same, same. I had to play an Android in this system for that exact yeah. reason. Um, it was like doing the trend of Starfinder having great story and setting and trash systems. Yeah, right. Um, like, it's impressive. But no, like um, it was nice to explore that kind of like put, dipping your feet in the water of like identity and where it comes from, right? Like um, that yeah, was nice. The idea of continuity of identity across changes and that it's not that it's a you know, not being a new person, but being a, a better expression of the person that always was. Yeah, and I tried to play Alice kind of cold to weird in this particular yeah. session to highlight that she isn't sure if she knows weird or if she needs to learn who weird is, yeah. if that makes sense, because she isn't really... Yeah, like, I, I can't wait to kind of explore a bit more of that, which is another reason why she was like, who is going where? Because I think mm -hmm. I maybe want to be on the other mission that isn't the one I have to go with weird. Um, yeah, that's why I kind of made it a point to say something to her at the end mm -hmm. when she was heading out. Nothing like too emotional, I think, but just a, a connection. Exactly. Uh, yeah, and like she kind of just like she didn't really respond, but she like acknowledged it and stuff. Like I definitely yeah. want to explore it because it's her, like Alice and your characters' interactions have a bit more depth than other people's, yeah. um, and I kind of want to explore that as well to see how that goes. Um, even more because yeah like it's been a shame she's been out of it for a wee bit yeah. considering you've went through a massive change for your character I oh guess. yes but and I, I must say I quite enjoy as well kind of being more into uh, there's almost a reflection between Weird's relationship with obviously having been next five and the entire concept of androids obviously changing mm -hmm. um, and how in other changes they are different people different souls different consciousnesses whereas in this case it's very much still him, but he still has this weird relationship. I guess it's almost you know the concept of dead naming or whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, of how do you relate to your past self? I guess it probably comes back to a lot of other stuff that we talked about before the session as well. In terms of the complexity and ambiguity and the greyness of people, you know. Yeah, just identity as a concept in yeah. itself, right? Which is interesting. Um, yeah, uh, so that's definitely what I come in here for. Good. Uh, and the horrible jokes. Yes, uh, whole jokes, uh, yep. Yep. Uh, I thoroughly enjoy anything to the captain and Craig, as ever. Um, <laughs> and just feel like that feeling of Lyco being the professional in the room yeah. with all of this chaos around him as he's trying to like, prep his guns for the mission and we are making smoothies and Craig is making all sorts of nonsense. And it's like, I always get the... You know, as much as the spooky zombie feels like it should be. Um, mm -hmm. Sorry, is that a slur? I don't know. Um, uh, like, it feels like that should be, you know, not the straight man in the scene. Uh -huh. Like, there should be the campiest element or something. But uh, you almost get the office vibe that you just got to stare down the camera mm -hmm. when the shit's happening. I really appreciate that kind of how someone seeming so alien ends up being the most human element of the party. Mm hmm. In a room um, full of very, very odd individuals, quite frankly. Yeah. Yes. Like, he was he obviously kicked out of the uh, stewards, but not fitting into their database, and yet here he is the average Joe. Yeah. And that is just, yeah, the uh, the weirdness of it all really tickles me. Um, oh, it's, it's good. We have a lot of, again, we've talked about that in quite a few of the post games with the, uh, like, how things are weirdly either inverted or reflected. Um, yeah. And it is nice to see a lot of those themes kind of like just be genuinely entertaining, right? Because it all leads up to how fun a lot of this shit has been, quite frankly, especially for me as like a GM, I bounce a bunch of different characters off of you guys and have different responses instead of everybody going, I am the barbarian with the sword, so I will let the others talk. It's nice to see 
different ways, like, again, like, with ju just in regards to you and Isabel's relationship, like, he's never got off on the right foot for obvious reasons. She was a bit right. mm, brash. Um, <laughs> yeah. My, my criticism of her were totally on point. Yeah, right, 100%. But that, I think a lot of it is like, she wasn't necessarily disagreeing with that either. And, like, she is also just like, I get that you use, like, we don't have the best history, but let's forge together for a better future that involves getting rid of this liability that's a giant egg bomb. Right? Yeah, she could have said that. Yeah. Oh, but she won't. <laughs> she won't because she's a person that got killed because of you guys, right? So that's obviously going to be her. Like a baggage she carries on, you know. Oh man, she go get herself a different name. She leave that baggage behind. I mean, to um, be fair, she kind of does go by a different name because none of you's ever yeah. called her Isabel. Um, True, she's so. our skater girl. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, yep. But no, uh, well, I was just gonna say I, I enjoyed the there's a little bit of warmth with Queenie actually between Queenie and Weird today, which I'm hoping is a sign that she's uh, that relationship is on the end, even if it was just making smoothies. Yeah, like, I think she's in a nice place just now where, like, she managed to get, like, a massive jolt of perspective when, you know, her entire faculties were removed from her, um, oh, again, like, after her freedom, right? Like, she got to be free, she found out a whole bunch of horrible things about the galaxy and her sister and her people, and then dealt with the fact that, you know, you just went through some weird metamorphosis and killed some T-Rexes on her planet. She then went and got herself a bit of an upgrade to the cultures of the world through some kind of investment banker, and then got hulked out against her will by the radiation from Daza. And yeah, she really... Maybe that was like a, look what can happen to you. Look what you don't yeah. have control over. And Yu's actually like, lit, like Yu's got her out of that problem, but she didn't need to, given the situation. So I think there's definitely a level of respect she might never necessarily voice that in those words, right? But I think she's very much a case of uh, on board with the team, right? I think it almost helps as well. Of course, though. She's been very decent since mm -hmm. she got out of the hospital. Like, yeah. Yeah. No, it definitely comes across tonight. She think having the uh, tensions with Isabel almost helps because it. Going back to our psychology of people, there's nothing that makes you feel more like an insider, like having an outsider. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, yeah. it's weird as well because obviously she and SK, or Isabel, I should say, have a strange history as well. Um, there's a reflection element going on there as well. Yeah. Um, which I find interesting. There is. Um, anything else you want to add? No. no. Yeah, it's all good. It was good. Thank you very much. I'm going to go to Zig next because there's something I wanted to add into this session that I didn't. So Andy that managed to stick around for the post game. Here's some extra epilogue footage for you. <laughs> Squee. 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 Our med credits. So Zig, you um, have a calm update when you're like doing okay. all your pre-flight checks. Rorschach's journal. Um, so there's a wee kind of like you know you have a message. Do do. I think maybe I think Zig would have. Looked this is when you tell me. Oh, Zig doesn't read it. <laughs> the no, end. He, read it. he just does the thing at the end. No, yeah, of course Zig, Zig would have looked at it. Like maybe like after he finished like whatever, like you know thing he was checking, and then would check it. Yeah, there is um a bank transfer for you. Oh. Your uh, account reads whatever it had in it plus a hundred thousand credits. Holy shit. I shouldn't have closed the game manager. <laughs> so that is a thing that you get as you're I meant to add that in, but I get too excited about secret phone calls. Um, no, no no that's fair. And I was also trying to metal task about how many NPCs, so I think Finn is my favourite out of all of them now, just to be fair. Like <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I downloaded the book, you see. <laughs> um but yes, uh, feel free to be next, then Zig. Um, yeah, uh, it, was, it was really fun. I liked it. Um, sorry, I'm extremely tired. I know, buddy. <laughs> it was good. Um, I, I I actually enjoyed like um, uh, the canteen. <laughs> Everything about the canteen made me happy. I had this real. Um, 
in my mind, like, this sort of, like, jump cut between, like, Isabel in a sort of, like, with a dark, grainy sort of filter over it. And then, like, the kept jumping between that and then the cafeteria where, you know, everything's, like, hyper-coloured, very um, marvelly, mm-hmm. Ragnarok colour scheme. Yeah, very vibrant, um, yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, it was the, it's uh, the film noir, right, that Isabel seems to be in versus the almost, um, yeah, as you say, kind of Marvel-esque uh-huh. Gu- Guardians vibrancy. Um. So yeah, I, like that, that that in my mind is really really fun and made me very happy. Um, everything everything like oh, today was just was good. Um, just, just solid likeisms and <laughs> um, I'm, I'm, there's loads basically everything, but yeah, that's all my brain can say. Okay. CC's wonderful. Captain's wonderful. Weird's wonderful. Um, Admiral Weird, that is. Um, <laughs> Self promotions are the best promotions. Evidently. <laughs> yep. The um, yeah, and now you're a very rich rat. So that's something. Very rich rat. What was it? Hundred on top of that. A hun- That was a hundred thousand credits. Oh right. Okay. You were paid. Okay. Yes. Right. Hold on. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, because like, yeah, it's a uh, bank transfer from, um, you know, Thanida's account, quite frankly. Cool. Brilliant. Thank you very much. I think things very happy. I liked that part a lot. <laughs> that was good. Yes. I just wanted to do it here instead of the start of next session because I'd rather you had the week to think about if you cared enough to try and requisition things. Um, you know, you would need to find RP time to do such a thing, but it gives you a bit more time to play with the concept of it instead of hitting you with it in the next session. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, because I mean, Thyda definitely does feel thankful towards the fact that you spent, obviously she doesn't know exactly how much you spent on her, um, but she is aware that that is a lot of money, so she was willing to pay that back. Um, anything else to add then? Uh, um... No, thank you for running, it was good. Um, Thanks for playing, despite your tiredness and your eventful evening. <laughs> um, mm. Yes. And um, I, I'm i really looking forward to next week. It was nice to have a sort of like... It did really feel like a, a, we're getting ready, although we're, you know, we had lunch, <laughs> essentially. It was, That's it was getting ready. Like Eating's getting ready, yeah. Getting, like, prepped and, like, this is the cam before the storm of Go, go, go! Mm-hmm. Kick some goals and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Most definitely. Me. Excellent. And Thanks for listening, avid listener. Lyco, do you want to go next? He is muted. I, I am, so it seems. Yeah! So that was that was quite a twist at the end. Um, I don't think we're too shocked because we I'm we not. are people who have read fiction before, yep. and uh, and we knew that it was very likely she was the one who had been speaking to Edgar because it wasn't going to be a random irrelevant character. <laughs> um, <laughs> so, but that will be interesting to see how that plays out and what exactly her alliance with Edgar is. Is it a reluctant one? Is it? Maybe you know he brought her back. Maybe, what exactly is? Who knows? We shall see. Uh, so that's an extremely interesting thing. Uh, you made an interesting point, um, Alex, about the, the the kind of funniness. I mean, you and Brian were both talking about the 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 the, uh, the, the humor and the strangeness in in the the sort of um, Lyco being the everyman, mm-hmm. uh, which is, in one level, quite amusing because he's kind of a person who is in a strange position and he is like he is a supernatural entity right like he he might not have the full benefits of being undead that you would see in some systems but he is technically speaking undead he is a dead person who walks and talks that's weird um no, it's like a- spelling yeah <laughs> <laughs> but in in some ways he he is the most like most of us because he's a human is a person, right? We can put ourselves wow. more easily in a person's shoes. 
Like, even if they're dead. Well, we, we can't imagine, really. Like, it's the whole thing, you can't imagine what it is to be a bat, you can only imagine what it is to be a human thinking. You're implying thinking that, that I am cold-blooded. You can't put yourself into an alien reptile's shoes. I no, mean, the entire idea of an alien reptile doesn't even make sense. Um, <laughs> that you, you can't put yourself into the shoes of these people fully because you can never be anything other than a, a human being, right? So we can partly put ourselves in the shoes of Lyco in a way that we can't necessarily in others because we can't imagine... We, we don't know what it's like to be Vesk, right? So, but we do know what it's like to be human. So in a way, it actually kind of makes a lot of sense that sometimes he would be the the Xander. Mm. Um, and, yeah, like, he he isn't exactly an everyman, but he, he sort of might seem a little bit compared to a lot of people in this situation. And there's also an aspect of him being the straight man, because he is obviously someone with a sense of humour and all that. But his personality is a lot... You know, if you took away the fact that he's undead, he's not a particularly out-there character. Uh, whereas Zig is a wreck. The captain is just deep, deeply weird. And weird <laughs> is... Um, odd. Yeah, he's... Uh, I would describe weird ironically not so much as weird, but as odd. Yeah, um, he, he, is, he's, he is an odd customer. Um, he's quite at times serene and distant and clinical even uh, but he also is someone with a sense of humor he's someone with passions he's he, he the, 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 there's some really strange personalities on board the ship and, tell me uh, about it <laughs> yeah so it's interesting that Lyco does quite often i would say it's extremely problematic because he is of course the, the only um white straight human male I mean, you're in fact very pale, in fact. Um, yeah, he's extremely white. <laughs> yes. Because uh, I think, I, I, I don't know if, if, this, if this has actually been explicitly stated in canon, but I think Lyco is straight. He feels straight to me. Um, yeah, like, it's weird to say I get that vibe from him, but we've discussed this vaguely before. Um, I think we probably have. I don't know, he just he just seems straight. Yeah. Like, just feels like it to me uh anyway but that's not really there because he's, he's he's not he's very much in a position of like i this whole undead thing relationships are kind of off the cards for me mm -hmm. um so it doesn't i don't think it's something that'll come up much but i think it's there anyway so it's, it's, that's just like an interesting little thing about the position he ends up by um it was it was it was obviously nice to see alice again it was i <laughs> wasn't super shocked when you revealed that it was a pillow. <laughs> um, but it was... <laughs> it was a bit of a surprise because I honestly didn't... Like, it occurred to me that that's something that you might do, but I didn't actually think you would do it. Mm. It's very <laughs> Alice, <laughs> to be fair. Uh, yes, I don't, don't think she quite read the room. <laughs> no. Um, but no, that was good fun. And it was also interesting because, yeah, we, we, we got to see her reacting to him having changed without her mm -hmm. you know previously they kind of went through a big change at the same time uh, and together to an extent well keep in mind like her weird near-death experience right like he went through that with her quite yeah. literally and yeah there is elements maybe in there that she maybe just feels like he's went a step away from her or even love like being left behind right but yeah like away in any direction right like i mean he's he's took a step elsewhere that she wasn't included in interesting because you have that paralleled with you know we're, we're coming back and we're all actually a bit changed mm -hmm. Zig is I think a little less nervous um, but he's still very uncertain and if anything he's even less certain than he was previously uh, and um, I think uh obviously weird has gone through some changes and is embracing more um and the captain's definitely i think the captain over time is becoming less and less fesque almost like he is so just um he's gone native mm. he's gone native mm. but... really <laughs> no i've it's just hit me right do you remember the dinosaurs tv show ah uh, did my I god Day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like this has just came to my mind, but like the idea that you're like the father figure of that particular 
quick show. I, I can see it. I yeah, can see it. and a, a certain I'm CC right. is not the mama. No, I'm yeah, not going to lie. <laughs> Getting such big vibes with CC. I was like, not the, not the baby. He's <laughs> taking so on this like paternal role with CC, even if reluctantly and mm -hmm. not terribly well. Uh, and of course, obviously, literally some physical changes with Lyco again. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, there's 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 that sense that she's kind of it's only been like a little while, but we've come back after you know like a week or so, and and and. We're actually quite different. And with new and, people as well, right? Like CC and Alex. Uh, uh, yeah, Thanida, sorry. Isabel, who died and now is back. And uh, CC, uh, who is extremely uh, CC. frenetic and <laughs> weird. Um, I'm using the word weird a lot. And very so for weird. Um, so, yeah, so it's, it's, it's a bit of an interesting thing for her to have to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, so, what? They're, they're obviously continuing bickering, which was always fun. Um, I'm not quite sure why. I think Weird and Isabel don't click. Like, he obviously has been quite standoffish with quite a lot of people, and I think it just is a certain type of personality that doesn't quite get that that's just him. Like, I think if people reacted to him in a different way, than these same characters could, but, but because Isabel <sighs> Isabel seems to be quite prickly at times, like and the same is true with the Queen, the Queen's got a sort of a haughtiness of course um, and an aggression uh, and a pride and Isabel, I wouldn't say it's necessarily that she's proud, she's more like uh, she, 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 she knows she is competent and what have you and she is unwilling to take the blame basically for things that she doesn't feel like, she is very much asserting her own ability and like no 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 don't 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 put this on me but of course I mean I, I, you know she, she, she could run away too but um, <laughs> I yeah, mean yeah I mean, because if she had run away, right, or, or and gave us like another turn, we'd have killed it anyway. Um, <laughs> or if I used my gun properly, admittedly, yes. But look, or if any of like Nick's five shots had landed, like any, yeah, of, like, yeah. like, like yeah. it was such bad dice luck, but it led to such good drama later, right? Um, but yeah, so we, we've got we've got this clash of personalities there. We're gonna have an interesting dynamic. On the uh, pleasure of yacht uh, <laughs> as it heads towards the sun. I don't know why, I became, I don't know why I became Alan Rick. It's going to gonna be horrible, let's face it. Look who's on that ship. We're going to I have mean, a pleasure yacht. We Get are going to it. have a good trip if it's the last thing this family does. I mean, I'm kind of happy that Fenida's on the, the ship with the potential double crosser. That's kind of, that's kind of nice. Mm. Maybe she'll gear, gear the judo toss. Who will win? Mm. <laughs> uh, for neither. Like, uh, yeah, my money. Right I'll, just neither, I'll just can't I'll just can't irradiate the ship. Yeah. Jump yeah. outside. Wait for it to die down. If, well, li listen, if shit goes down and you have to calm us through, you know what the first thing I'm going to say to you is irradiate the queen. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. I, I like that we have this this like time bomb that is. Oh, we know Zig can set the night off. So, yes. <laughs> where is the the, yeah. the the Bruce Banner and uh, you know Natasha Romanov uh, relationship we we all desired for this game? But, uh, yeah, so uh, I won't I won't go on too much longer. But yeah, there, there, there was there was a fun little dynamic set up for that journey. I'm intrigued to see what awaits them in the sun if they make it to the sun. I'm intrigued to see what goes down in verses and uh, you know what happens in Akaton. <laughs> Space mm. Uh, one hopes. Hmm. Well, I guess we'll find out. Eh? Um, anything else you'd like to add? Uh... No, good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Zora. Uh, I mean, most of it's been covered, but it was just actually, it was actually just a fun session. Quite funny, actually. A lot of funny stuff happening. Uh, <laughs> we got I mean, yeah. I'm not surprised about Isabel. Not at all. I was kind of expecting it. I was hoping it wouldn't. Like, I, I, I was hoping not. 
But I was expecting that. I mean, we don't know what's happening, right? We, we don't know. Double crossery. Okay. She's tried to throw us a loop saying, oh, Edgar's behind it all. Oh, conspiracy theories. And then, then, aye. I mean, I don't think she ever actually said he was behind any of it. She asked you what you thought if that was the case, I think. So. That was that. That was, that was like thrown as a curveball. <laughs> also, I counted that I was eight different NPCs in this session. Um, <laughs> which, given how many of you there are, yeah. I shouldn't be double the number of players. There's actually an interesting question because, like, uh, it just occurred to me, sorry, like, uh, we don't actually know that just because she's in league with them that she isn't actually just starting to put some of this together herself. Mm. We, 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 it might seem like a reasonable thing to assume, but we don't actually know it. Mm hmm. We don't. The old double double bluff. I'll assume to assume until <laughs> I have been assumed. But <laughs> I only knew. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's an over Frankenstein, etc. etc. <laughs> um, well, so the, the canteen was pretty funny. It was mm -hmm. pretty fun. And. Thank God. Alice wasn't pregnant. Just, just yeah, because I don't need like, any more NPCs to play. That's why. Uh, nah, I don't. I don't need any more like maternal like stuff happening in the ship. No thanks. Mm. It's CC and uh, slightly growing up Alice is, is enough. Is enough. Mm -hmm. To be fair, Alice probably just went a bit cabin feverish, right? Like, <laughs> like that seems to be the vibe she was giving off. Was the I've been on the ship and I, I guess I just thought I'd learned stuff about the ship then since I've got nothing to do and trying to stay in that one place consistently meant the planet moved away from me so I couldn't get Ivan aye like I like that one just check out ah <laughs> <laughs> I did not that is one place I did not look um, obviously she didn't look at that right let's face it of course she wouldn't have looked in the almost obvious place <laughs> I dream too easy, I suppose. Mm -hmm. But Finn's amazing. Finn's, Finn's fun. I'm really enjoying yeah, Finn. It's nice like that he's back. Um, just very output AI that he is. <laughs> um, oh dear. No, it's good. It was. It was. It's interesting seeing Zora adapt their captaining skill, which seems to be every day give less fucks. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> important things to worry about than command structure. Like. <laughs> I mean, we'll see, because obviously uh, nobody has told Sanida that Weird is in charge of that particular mission, and that's going to be interesting. Um. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's the obvious choice, right? I'm not going to get the fucking Isabel. She's like... Actually crazy. <laughs> yeah, I was, I mean, was going to put a light on that, because... <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so crazy. But I, uh, I'm sure, will understand that. Like, there are some interesting words in, a, in an arrangement that's also interesting. So I yeah, will I understand. Mean, <laughs> I mean, honestly, I don't see like I has been that irrational. Like, I, I don't. Other than being irradiated batshit crazy, like, yeah, just avoid uh, the radiation. Yeah, you should be good. That's not the time that she's actually been. Why we're going to, you know, irrational? Really? Yeah, the sun. <laughs> Yep. Oh, I'm like the whole. Mm -hmm. Sorry. I'll go for it. No, I was like the whole vest can shake thing, but that was just Tom mm -hmm. being big man, essentially. Like, I mean, to be fair, it was also just her being kind of flirty with you, right? Like, mm -hmm. clearly, she'd learned from everything about the weird telepathic transera, like transera, uh, sorry, Tyrannosaurus, like Tyrannosaurus meat, that um, you know. Vesk are a bit more aggressive about these things, and the females are meant to be a bit more, you know, take the lead, as it were. So, you know, aggressively attacking you after you try and propose to her several times is a <laughs> felt right to her, maybe, right? Yeah, maybe. Um, but no, nah, I mean, I've never seen Fanida as being completely irrational, and I'm sure that she would understand that it is, well, well, yeah. Mm. But again, they're probably the most responsible person of the OG crew. Like, uh, just don't build a bomb. Really. <laughs> that's 
<laughs> I can't make any promises. <laughs> I can't. I mean, I can't fault you for that. To be honest. Slowly. I, I mean, like, I feel like this is maybe where the captain should fault him for things like that. Maybe you should <laughs> state these things like, if you can avoid it, avoid building the bomb. If you need to build the bomb, after having tried to avoid building the bomb, also Wait, don't build the bomb. The bomb and you need it. Yeah, this is true. Uh, They'd rather have a bomb and not need it than need a bomb and not have it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's good to tell. But in theory, you'll have a bomb in the form of Zig and the Queen. So you're sorted regardless. Um, yeah, but what about backup bombs? What about backup bombs? I need a bomb to take out the bomb if it goes out of control, you know? I agree. It's like a breaching bomb. It's almost like a breaching charge, but it's for bombs. Well, that's when nuclear warheads have a, have a smaller charge, a conventional charge, to set off the reaction. Mm hmm. Yeah, so a small bomb tends to get the the bigger bomb. Yes. So right, okay. I see. A remote bomb. A bomb <laughs> remote. Um, anything else you'd like to add, no. Zara? No, no. no. Uh, it was good. It was good fun. Thanks for it. Oh, that is. These are all all very welcome. It's always fun to run this game somehow. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, like guys, it's fifty eight done. Um, just for everybody wondering, it was Thanida, Cece, Isabel, Finn, Alice, Edgar, Matva, and the Scorpion Blender. Thus concludes my NPC list. Um, yeah, uh, goodbye. Oh, Scorpion Deathlock. No, oh, sorry. No, no, indeed. Uh, say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, goodbye everybody. everybody. Goodbye.